One week away, the final stretch for the athletes. We are going to start with a report from Tokyo. And then deep sea divers are getting closer than ever to the wreckage of the Titanic. They're taking photos that show detail like we've never seen before. So we'll tell you what we're still learning about that fateful voyage more than a century ago. Plus, me and the rest of the third hour gang buddied up. We played some mini golf. It was the news nerds versus Come the on, news wizards. nerds. Come on. Talk, make me proud. Well, here's the thing. You know, we're down like 3-1. I don't like that. No. I want the news nerds. You got to represent. Stay tuned to find out. It might be a comeback. Okay. Plus, Kristen Chenoweth came to our studio to hang out with Hoda and Jenna. She treated them to a little Friday musical performance. What a way to start the weekend. Right? Let's get it started ourselves. Time. Can you want to do it together? Let's do it. We've been practicing. All right. It's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. Hey, today in 30, I'm Tom Yamas at the Tokyo Games, and we are getting our first up-close look at one of the most high-profile venues. This is the Tokyo Aquatic Center. This is where legends are going to be made, and that pool right there, Katie Ledeck, Caleb Dressel, and the rest of Team USA are going to be going for gold medals. Now to our countdown to Tokyo with just one week until the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. The athletes are getting ready for go time, but it's certainly not business as usual in the Olympic Village. NBC senior national correspondent Tom Yamas is on the ground in Tokyo. Hi, Tom. Good morning. Hey, Savannah, good morning to you. You said it. We are one week away from the opening ceremony, and the Olympic bubble that we are in, along with the athletes, is coming under scrutiny, and that's because COVID cases are rising here in Tokyo. Already a member of a foreign delegation has been had to be taken to the hospital because they were infected. And right now the search is on for a Ugandan athlete who skipped a PCR test, a weightlifter, and they can't find him anywhere. So the games are moving forward, but COVID still casting a big shadow. Begin that quest for gold. This morning, a roster shakeup for Team USA's men's basketball team. NBA star Bradley Beal not traveling to Tokyo after being placed in COVID protocols. You know, since he's a little kid, this has been a dream of his. And uh, he was playing great. And so for him and for his family, immediate family, it's devastating. So we just feel horrible about it. Back to Jeremy coming off a career high season. A second player, Jeremy Grant from the Detroit Pistons, also now being monitored. And in Tokyo, a new wave of infections is troubling health officials. Seven staff members at a hotel southwest of the city tested positive for COVID, the same hotel where a Brazilian delegation is staying. And somehow, an Olympic athlete in quarantine tested positive for COVID. But despite all that, the excitement is still building for these games, and we're getting our first look at one of the most high-profile venues. This is the Tokyo Aquatic Center. This is where legends are going to be made during these games. In that pool right there, Caleb Dressel, Katie Ledecky, and the rest of Team USA will be going for the gold. From the pool to the field. Who do they for? USA! The USA softball team already practicing in Japan. Outfielder Haley McClenney telling us about the unique experience living inside the Olympic Village. You walk out of your door, you immediately grab a mask and um, in the dining hall, you know, one of the biggest places to probably meet new people. Your um, setup is, you know, plexiglass dividers in between every single seat. And good news for tennis fans. Novak Djokovic ranked number one in the world and fresh off a Wimbledon victory. Happy birthday, my friend. Happy sixth birthday. Announcing on Twitter in a birthday message to one of his Japanese fans, he will be competing in Tokyo, keeping his chances alive for the first ever men's golden slam, a grand slam plus a gold medal. Tom, you've also spoken to several athletes and organizers there in Tokyo. So with these latest COVID cases and concerns, I mean, what's what's you got your ear to the ground. What's the general feeling right now going into the games? Look, Savannah, I can tell you we were out at some of the venues today. They are absolutely incredible. Organizers are treating this event like it is the world's biggest and best sporting event. Every single athlete I talk to who's coming to Tokyo is excited. They understand they have to follow these protocols, but they don't care. They want to be here. They want to compete. They want to win a gold medal. Simone Biles is here. Mike Tirico just got here from NBC Sports. We're just waiting for Savannah, Hoda, and the entire Today Show team so we can get things started. Well, I'm flying today. Save my seat, Tom, okay? <laughs> uh, seat at the bar, that <laughs> is. It. You can watch the, yeah, well, you know how that is. You can watch the Tokyo Olympics, right. by the way, beginning July 23rd across the networks and platforms of NBC. We're back with a look at some really stunning new images from the latest deep sea expedition to the Titanic. This dive, one of many planned this summer to capture the sunken ship's wreckage 
like never before. NBC News Now anchor Joe Fryer has more on the man spearheading the effort and what his team has found so far. Joe, good morning. Just when you hey think there. you knew all the secrets of the Titanic. Yep, there's still more to find. Think about it. So we started this week actually talking about folks going 50 plus miles up to the edge of space. Well, for this story, we're going nearly two and a half miles down to see what remains of a sunken ship that's fascinated us for decades. The man behind this mission actually did dream of blasting off into space while growing up, but is now focused on worlds below. The new images taken more than 12,000 feet below the ocean's surface offer a window into what was once the Titanic, including pictures of a window, a stained glass one now resting on the ocean floor. You can also see remnants of concrete flooring and tile and the rest unidentified debris that a team of researchers is still working to classify. It's the latest look at where the majestic ocean liner's wreckage has remained for more than a century. Images captured by the team at Ocean Gate Expeditions, led by CEO Stockton Rush. It's the Everest of, of shipwrecks, and really we wanted to galvanize uh, people's interest in, in the deep ocean, and, and the Titanic's the way to do that. The five-person crew descended in a vessel named Titan, not a submarine, but a submersible. That's a vessel that requires a support ship on the water's surface. Ocean Gate says Titan is the only five-person submersible in the world that can go deep enough to reach the wreckage. Their goal is to document the Titanic with 4K video and state-of-the-art laser and sonar technology, creating a high-res 3D image of what remains of the ship. They also plan to study the sea life around it. The luxury British steamship, thought to be unsinkable, did sink after hitting an iceberg on its maiden voyage from England to New York in 1912, a disaster that took more than 1,500 lives. This is it! Oh God, Hold on! Oh oh the ship's tragic fate inspired one of the highest grossing films of all time, the ship's deep sea grave wasn't discovered until 1985, motivating generations of explorers to capture images of what's left of the wreckage as it rapidly disintegrates. We really do try to, to keep the memory of those who died, but also to keep their memory alive by being able to understand their artifacts and, and what really happened and is happening to the shipwreck. Along with the scientists and experts, there are mission specialists who can pay to join the crew and help with the expedition. Rush says that many do have family ties to the Titanic. Ocean Gate Expeditions has already completed three of its five planned missions. The last one will wrap up and then head back to the surface on August 7th. You should oh, go, cool. Joe. That was, but sure, come in. <laughs> as long as I don't have to like snorkel or scuba. 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 Is that what we're talking about? You should more than a snorkel. You should not go. As a matter of fact, we're going to need a bigger snorkel. Someone else. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Joe. Joe. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is from, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes. This is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Tonight, we're on the scene as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. The expression, rise and shine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
This morning in our series, Your Health, a remarkable story that really sounds like it's straight out of science fiction. Oh, I've been looking forward to this. Chanel, you've got an exclusive look at a medical breakthrough that helped one woman have a baby, even though doctors told her she'd never be able to carry her own child. It's really an impressive story. Millions of women suffer from something called uterine factor infertility. That's when a woman can't carry a baby because her uterus isn't functioning. It's a condition impacting up to 5% of reproductive age women. Well, now some doctors are performing a groundbreaking transplant surgery, which is helping some of these patients have children. Oh my goodness. He's perfect. <laughs> this is like not real. <laughs> not long ago, these two women oh were goodness. perfect strangers. <gasps> <laughs> now they share a bond that's unbreakable in the form of this tiny baby boy named Teldon Walker. Do you remember the first time you held Teldon? I do. I can't even explain you know, how how it feels to hold them now still. It's like a gift that I will never, ever, ever be able to repay Cheryl for. Chelsea Jovanovich was a teenager when doctors told her she would never be able to get pregnant. Born with a rare condition called MRKH, her uterus never fully developed. It was devastating. All I ever wanted to do was be a mom. Chelsea and her husband Jake tried surrogacy but were unsuccessful. Near the point of giving up, the couple decided to try something that seemed unimaginable. For some reason, I had remembered where my primary care provider had given me that Time magazine about the uterine transplants. I'm like, I'm just going to Google it. That's when a uterus from a living or deceased donor is transplanted into another woman so that she can carry a baby. It's an experimental surgery being tested for women who don't have a functioning uterus. So far, there have been 50 uterus transplants performed all over the world. 20 babies have been born. These women have ovaries, they have eggs, they just don't have the uterus to gestate the pregnancy. So once we are able to give them that uterus, the vast majority get pregnant and have babies. Chelsea found a uterus transplant program at Penn Medicine in Philadelphia. And I said, well, I'm just gonna apply. They're never gonna pick me, but. Why didn't you think they would pick you? <laughs> because there's probably so many people applying. I didn't think that it would be an option for us. One ovary right here. But after undergoing a series of tests, Chelsea was not only selected to undergo a transplant, doctors told her they already had a donor who was a match. I was in shock because I wasn't actually believing that we were going to, you know, do this. In February 2020, she underwent the 12 hour transplant surgery. Six weeks later, doctors implanted one of the couple's three embryos. The first didn't work. But the second time around, oh my God. I went my whole life thinking I wasn't able to carry a child. It's like something out of a dream. As Chelsea's baby bump grew bigger, the couple couldn't help but wonder who was this mysterious donor. All I knew is whoever this lady was, she was pretty selfless and pretty amazing. But a few weeks later, Chelsea got the opportunity to meet the donor. Cheryl Urban, a 42-year-old Pennsylvania mother of two who decided to become a donor after hearing about uterus transplants on the local news. The two women had an instant connection. Something brought us together and, I mean, even our personalities seemed very similar. On May 18th, Chelsea delivered baby Teldon. And last month, Cheryl met him for the first time. Really? We did this? It worked? <laughs> and this is amazing. What made you want to do this? Um, I had two great pregnancies. I enjoyed pregnancy. I enjoyed the feeling of my kids. Um, so I just wanted to be able to give that to somebody else. You know, I had my kids. Now, so these two women call right. each other soul then, sisters. I do. I feel like a part of your family. I'm like, every picture, I'm like, oh my God. I felt like I was pregnant with you. Thanks to a breakthrough surgery, 
and a selfless act. Oh, we were all just standing around I mean, staring at each other. I have chills. My goodness. So let me tell you. So Chelsea says, uh, tells us that in just a few months, they're going to try for one more baby with this same uterus. Doctors say while this type of transplant is still being studied right now, they are getting better and better at it and having more success. And they hope in the near future that it'll become a viable option for women with this type of infertility. So she'll do it one more time and then they'll take the uterus. What a beautiful act Isn't of generosity it? from a total stranger. I'm so Amazing. moved by that. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking bright. We are going to be cheering you on all the ways. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Cheers to you. Cheers. 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 We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning. See the expression? Rise and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. Talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of my daughter and it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky, in Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this? Or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Hi, everybody. Our Today and 30 Friends. Hello. Do you know Hello. what we're doing? Do you want me to tell you? Yeah. OK, yeah. I'm going to tell you. We're talking about the news nerds and the weather wizards and what you're about to witness. About <laughs> Take a look. It's our buddy up. These, see? So you can guess who won. We are back with a terrific edition of Buddy Up. Once again, we are pitting the news nerds versus the weather wizards. A couple of weeks ago, we faced off as we watched storms roll in, playing some backyard games. News nerds came out on top. So this time, we went to Pier 25 Mini Golf here in New York City to settle the score again. All right, ready for an in-person buddy up? It's going down. Yes. I want to win again. That's right, because we have soundly yeah. trounced, <laughs> trounced you both. I'm ready to win. Come on, on losers. <laughs> what a great role model you Let's are for go. your children. The third hour gang getting back together on a hot summer day for a mini version of mini golf. We had just five holes to determine whether the news nerds or weather wizards would come out on top. Purple, I'm going to do green. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Hi. Rules, I'm simple. Excited. Each player, four strokes, win the hole, move on. Didn't take very long for the sabotaging to start. All right, here we go. Come on. But soon, we were up and putting. Yes! Yeah! All right! Great start! Woo, Great start! Go, news nerds. That's what I'm talking about! Woo. News nerds up by one, but not even the sound of New York City sirens could stop my Dylan. Big up, go, 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 go. Oh, God. So rude, and it's so, Big up, go, go, and it's so echoey in here. Wow. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Yes! Oh. Hole in one! There we go! Oh. Yes! Pressure's oh, on. Pressure's your turn, on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you stop it. <laughs> Keep it down. Oh, oh, uh oh. Come on, come oh. on. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Is that out? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's in the rough. 
To be clear, we're tied at one hole apiece. Yes. yes. Okay. Oh! Yes! She blew it! Come on, news nerd. Come on, big mouth. Wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on baby. Oh! You're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh! Oh. If you drop this in, we're tied for the hole. There yes! you go. Yes! Yes! Come on! We're still in it, baby. Tie break the hey, hole. No pressure. All right. Round. Up. Down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes! No! no. Oh, yes! Woo. What? Yes! <laughs> nice shot. After Dylan's second hole in one of the game, things not looking too good for the news nerds. Until Chanel pulled out her terrific talent. That's enough. Come on down here, baby. Come on down. This looks good. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Get in the oh, hole. Oh, no! Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Yes! Get in the hole. Yes! yes. Get in the hole. Yeah, baby! They win that hole. Pretty impressive. So, all coming down to the fifth and final hole. News nerds, victorious against weather wizards. Oh! Oh, that's too much. Uh-oh, oh, 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 oh. Bye-bye! Bye-bye. Oh. Go, 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 go. Oh, that's no. not good. Oh, oh, oh. His strategy of having no strategy appears to be paying off. <laughs> yep. It was up to Chanel to win it all. You've been doing this all day. All day. All you got to do is drop this puck. Ready? <laughs> That's it. Woo! It's over. It's over. Yeah. We finally conquered the evil demon. Congratulations. Woo! Congratulations. Why do you have to be so nice? Thank I don't you. want to be nice. You are a Come sore on, loser. Come on, bring it in. No. No. Yes, no. Come on. No. no. Come on. That's disgusting. I don't, I don't like my own Come sweat. Come I don't want Come yours. On. You say this. Bring the baby in here. Bring the baby in here. Bring the baby in <laughs> you like it's funny, huh? In fact, I would tell you that if I knew you were going to hug me, I would have forfeited. <laughs> <laughs> Just walked away. Because your eye was so sweaty. We got a little sweaty. Oh, oh yeah. man, it was nasty. We're going to need a, a mega rematch because now I think it's two to, it's two, two, to two in overall yeah. buddy ups. We lost in so. ping pong. We lost in Pictionary. Pictionary. Right, so. But we won the last. Oh, that's right. They won the last two. We won the last two. So and of course, right. we won right, in so driving. So we need something big. Something big. <laughs> what something. can we do? You should suggest something. Yeah, suggest some buddy ups for us to do. At third hour today, what should our next buddy up be? so enjoy beating you all. That was so much fun. That's right. I want to take them fishing. That's what I want. That would be fun. Yes. I do want to do that. Yes, I can do a lot of things, oh, Craig. God, I mean, I mean, you know, can you do that? No. I, I just yes. can't drink gin. That's right. <laughs> Which she misses so, so much. much. Big thanks to Pier 25 yes. for putting up with us. <laughs> the place has never been the same. No. I think we only played five holes. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this, or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is from, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, they say people come into our lives for a reason. 
and for Kristen Chenoweth, that reason is to make us smile. I love a wicked mm. reference. It sure is. She can do it all. She can dance. She can act. And now she's starring in the brand new musical comedy series on oh, Apple TV Plus so called Schmigadoon. <laughs> it's about a couple in a relationship where right? they get stuck in a magical town where everyone is living in a musical. Totally normal. <laughs> so let's take a look. Our motto is we always strive for peace and happiness. What is Mrs. Layden? If Schmigadoon is to endure, it must be kept pristine and pure. This land on which our fathers trod must ever obey the laws of God. Look at your look at your look at your Joker lips and everything. Thank what are you doing? You but first of all, you always play nice. You always play sweetness and nice, mm -hmm. but not in Schmigadoon. Not in Schmigadoon. I had to call upon some people that maybe I know very well. I had to, I thought the Joker seemed pretty maniacal. Yes. And um, yeah, and maybe you know the former leader of our country holding a Bible upside down, just silly things like that. Even people that don't like musicals are gonna laugh, I know, from my husband, mm -hmm. who laughed out loud at this. This is the most hilarious. too, yeah. It's a mess. Edge. Edgy, it's, you know, my brother is very similar to your husband. He's like, I don't ever, I, I remember I was doing a musical in college and he said, don't ask me to come to one of those again. <laughs> and, but he'll, he'll love this because it does have the edge and then Keegan's character is the, the, guy. the, the person that doesn't like the musical yeah. and he's stuck. Yes. in this nightmare. I mean, if you wanted, like, the perfect cast, I think you might have it I'm there. I think you I mean, it? it's Alan Cumming, it's you, it's Cecily Strong, it's Keegan-Michael yeah. Key, it's Jane Kurkowski. Martin, it's Short Martin Short is the leprechaun. I know, I've I heard mean, of, Ariana DeBose, Dove Cameron. And I heard yeah. that even when y'all were quarantining, you and Alan <laughs> would do sing-offs in the shower. I mean, two different Who bathrooms. There y'all are. Oh, there well, we all oh, sing. That's the day I got out of quarantine. It was like, let's go to lunch. So he was my next door neighbor at the hotel, and I'm a night owl, and I would sing at night practicing. I had an 18 pager in a an song. 18 pager. I know. I can't believe she did that. I know. I, I couldn't, couldn't believe in it. So I would find 3 a.m. would be the perfect time for me to wake up and see if I had it. And one time, Alan was listening, and he just banged on the wall like. Please stop. <laughs> I beg you to please stop. I beg you. But he, I heard him singing too. So. I he, love that you stood for the first time in a year mm -hmm. and a half in front of an audience of 4,000. You got up on stage and you sang that first note. So how, what was that connection like? You know, I love the connection anyway between the audience and the artist. I love to be in the audience, but I wanted to be great mm. because mm -hmm. they all wanted to be there. They wanted to be there mm. and I wanted to be great. And I knew that it was going to be hard because I hadn't done it in a year and a half, the, the two-hour show. And the minute I heard the orchestra downbeat to, if you can believe it, que sera, sera, that song. <laughs> it's a beautiful orchestration. I walked out on stage and the audience clapping, standing, and oh, just tears. I already have chills I'm crying, right now. and I have <laughs> never been and, able to do and that. Beyond. And you, you wept in front of the audience, huh? Yeah, and I thought it's okay that they see this. And I, I held it together through the whole show until the very end when I sing um, a song, Charlie Chaplin's Smile. Mm. I sing it just with me in the piano. And I heard my pianist, Mary Mitchell Campbell, playing her, her interlude solo. And I saw how much she was moved by mm. it. Then I started crying again. Mm. And I was like, Kristen, really pull it together. Girl. Uh. Well, speaking of tears, um, you've had a lot of tears of joy because, yes. as you said, you found your person love. named Josh. I, I what a, what I mean, you found your person. I did. Did, I you, found my did person. you think that that day would come? No, and we had, we had met at, at my niece's wedding. Mm -mm. He was in a band that was playing, if you could believe it. And he finally, we finally came together and met, and he said, I'm gonna court you. And I thought, okay, I'm, I'm very you. busy. I'm, yeah, I'm very, very busy, dumb. I don't have time for that. No, 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 I just said that, and he did. And COVID is what brought us closer together. I think that's, that was a real sign for people. Either it brought people closer or it drove and them you apart. And you had to hit the brakes. Was it hard, just quickly, was it hard hitting the brakes for Kristen Chenoweth? The hardest. You're a worker. The yeah. hard, I'm, the, yeah. I'm like you guys, workhorse. No, yeah. I don't, it, it, it didn't compute. I thought it'd go over, be done in like three months. Yeah, and I then, know. Right. And it kept going. Well, Wait, can we please play a little bit of this game? Okay. Well, this is a town. Okay, this is where everything's a musical. We want to see if you really can turn anything to a musical. Okay. Okay. What about the definition of musical from the dictionary? Okay. Okay. Can you turn the Merriam-Webster <laughs> definition of a musical into a musical? The answer is yes. A musical <laughs> is a film 
or a theatrical production typically of sentimental or humorous nature, but consists of musical numbers and dialogue based on a terrifying plot. Yes! <laughs> we love you! Kristen, so we love good. you so much. Thank you for being with us. All right, I really hope you stick with us for another huge week on today. I can't believe it. Ted Lasso. Jason, Jason Sudeikis, Sudeikis is going to be here. Right yes. here, right here, right here. Uh, also, a few other faces, some familiar faces stopping by, like John Mayer. He's going to be treating us to some of his new music. So we'll see you bright and early Monday morning right here on Today. Safe travels to Tokyo. Thank you. Have, Have a, a great, great weekend. weekend. for joining us on Today All Day. Over in the next 30 minutes, I'll share some of my favorite interviews with you. These conversations include interviews with inspiring women, chatting all things books with a few of my favorite authors, and of course, some funny moments in between. So sit back and relax as Today All Day continues. If anyone can just like take this to a beach or a pool or their backyard or... Yeah. You know, and just the lose subway. themselves for a little. That's the point. Anywhere. That's the point. Anywhere. Your closet yeah. where you're hiding from your kids. <laughs> Do it. You know, but that that would be my greatest joy to hear that 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 people were able to do that. Hey, this is Jenna Bush Hager, and this is Open Book, and I'm so happy to talk with my friend Lauren Weisberger. She has written seven novels, is that right? Or is this your eighth? This is eight. This is number eight. eight. She has yeah. a new book out called <laughs> Where the Grass is Green and the Girls Are Pretty. And Lauren, I'm so happy to talk with you about this novel. But before we get to it, I want to know what type of reader you were as a little girl. Do you remember what book first turned you on and, and what book you were like, oh God, reading, I can't get enough of it? I, I feel like my answer might be the same as every other girl in my general age range in America, but <laughs> it had to be, are you there, God, it's me, Margaret. Oh, yes. Judy Bloom. I mean, everything Judy Bloom was formative, but that particular book will just forever just has a special place in my heart as I think it was like the first time I felt understood by yeah. by an author, that feeling of somebody has like crawled into your head and put words on the page that connects to what you're feeling. Other people know what I'm thinking and feeling was really eye-opening. And Judy Bloom is obviously the ultimate. I mean, all of her books did that for me, but that one in particular, I don't think I'll ever forget. I know I'm we're I think we're similar in age and I got to interview Judy Bloom and I was just like thank you thank you for not making me feel like we have to be perfect that we can just be ourselves and that is enough and I, yes. I totally agree with you okay so when you go to write a novel this is your eighth what's your process how do you get into these characters you know I will say it it really never gets any easier. People yeah. sometimes ask that, you know, is this something like, oh, you can just sit down and pound it out. And it's it's nothing like that. Um, with this particular book, I've, I've wanted to write a book about sisters forever. And, you know, it's I'm talking to the person who wrote and the ultimate book about sisters, which I absolutely loved. But um, my sister, Dina, really inspired this book and our relationship. And I it's funny, like the two characters in this one, their names were Peyton and Sky, and, and they're sisters, but neither Dana nor I line up with either of these characters. But the way that we talk to each other does. And I, I imagine that you're like this with Barbara, but like there's no one else in your life who just tells it like it is. The brutal, cold, no holds barred honesty, whether you want it or not, whether you're looking for it or not. Um, and I really wanted to kind of convey that in this book. And then the secrets and the scandal, um, the yeah. plot is sort of built around around that. To me, it feels like maybe the perfect summer read. Oh, love that, thank you. So how have books been keeping you company throughout this last year? You know, I think in a lot of the ways that they have from the time I've been a child, I grew up in a 
in a small town in Pennsylvania and I had unlimited access to our local library and that was the greatest gift ever. We would go once a week and I would get to check out anything I wanted and I learned quickly it's incredibly transportive. You can travel anywhere, you can read about other cultures, about other people um, and that was a revelation as a child, but it's something I think that's been really comforting now. It's really been lovely to escape into other worlds. But I do think for me, reading is one of my f very few flow activities. And, you know, to get into the flow of something great and just be yes. transported somewhere else is amazing. It's so funny, I've never heard it called a flow activity, but that's when people are like, how do you read so much? I'm like, give yourself 30 minutes to fall in love with the book. If you don't, my advice is to quit quit it. And maybe more than 30 minutes though. Maybe I give yourself a, you. you quit it. But once yeah. you're in it, if it's a great book, you're gonna be in it. You're gonna find time to read. You're gonna be reading, you know, yeah. while you're bathing, you know, or whatever it is, you're gonna find that time in the morning commute. Okay, what yeah. should we be reading besides your book, which we will pack in our bags for the summer? What else can you recommend? Something I just finished, which I don't know whether to call it a beach read or not. It was, it was very kind of dark, but also super intriguing. Um, it was a novel, it was a debut novel called The Push by Ashley oh, yeah. Watson. Did you read that? I, it well, was, I did, I did. It got, it got, that was one that we would would have wanted to be a read with Jenna pick, but it got taken by the competitor. So I, yes. I, I do recommend yes. it, I do recommend <laughs> it. I, I just loved it. A real sort of like mother-daughter psychological thriller. And my sister's a family therapist and it was very interesting to hear her like analysis of these characters, her take on it. Yeah. Um, so that was that was really, really, really good. I loved so, that one. Now in your new novel, there is a television show um, host. Yes as one of the characters. I wonder, can you give us a little secret of where you pulled inspiration for her? That's like, my, yes, one of my two main sisters, um, her name is Peyton Marcus, and she is the, you know, huge um, morning news show anchor. And she has worked really, 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 really hard to get to where she is. And then, of course, I think there's some questioning and some reckoning about whether or not she's in the right place. But, you know, I look around at at, at so many of, of these women that we see on TV, you and your colleagues and, you know, so many others that I can see. And I'm in awe of how you all do it. Like, that's something that intrigues me. Well, we know The Devil Wears Prada, which is one of your books, of course, became a film which anybody that closes their eyes can remember almost all of those scenes. Um, any talks of a film or TV series with this one, or is it too early? I think it's a lit, fingers are crossed. I'm hopeful okay. that- Let's um, cross them. Yes, yes. Do a collective hopeful process. I'll have good news on that front. <laughs> that would be one of the best experiences ever. I would, I would love to have that again. I, I just remembered this. I mean, I'm sure I knew this before I read about uh, about you when you wrote that book, but you were actually Anna Wintour's assistant. So there was some, yeah. that was your first job, one of your first jobs. First job out of college, crazy. First job out of college, no idea how it happened. Um, ended up at her desk and I was there, you know, just under a year and it definitely informed that whole book. For sure, yeah. It was a crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy entrance sort of into the working world of New York City and it was wild, wild. Well, this book is so much fun. I started reading it yesterday. I think I'll probably be done with it by tonight. <laughs> you, like I tell everybody, you wanna be like, okay kids, we're going to bed early tonight. Let's close yes. the door. Yes. Mama's gotta read. Um, Lauren, congratulations. And I know so many people will be reading along with me. So 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hi. Hello. I haven't seen you in too long. It's I fun know. to see you on Instagram. So, I'm so happy to see your face. I'm so happy to see you in your Cheers. beautiful bookshelf. Oh, what are you drinking? <laughs> I mean, we have water. It's still Mother's Day, right? Right? <laughs> it's every day. Water, I, I get that. I got week. this green stuff. What is that? It's well, now you're making know. me I feel it guilty, I got my Jenna. vaccine. This green <laughs> stuff that I put in my water, but it can I put it my... in my mimosa? <laughs> <laughs> it, that's the perfect combo. Um, Siri, I'm so happy to talk with you. Thank you for having me, friend. Okay, so I was just telling everybody on Insta Live that I have a group of people that I send my books to every month. And you're one of them because you love to read. And I feel like this year has really been a reading year for you. Was it a New Year's resolution? It, it was my New Year's resolution because I have always loved to read, but I finally at some point in my life realized I was turning into like a summer reader. Yeah. Like I, that was the only time I would read a book. It's just, I didn't prioritize it to find the time. And finally this New Year's, I was like, you know what? No, I'm, and I don't typically make New Year's resolutions, at least ones that like, I don't know how to go. You're not so, going to do yeah. exactly, but I was. I just want to try to read ten. I see her. Already read five, so I feel like I can go beyond that. It just feels so good. I feel it's, it's almost like once you start, you kind of can't stop. Um, like I put a book down and then I pick yeah. up the next one. So it's been good. It's so funny. It's so that's so true. And I also think people will say like, "How do you read?" And I mean, you have four kids. You have a baby. I do. <laughs> it is, it is, you really do have to find the time. What I've found, and a good friend of mine who, who loves to read also was like, take the books with you wherever you go. Cause you'll always find that like minute before school pickup or like whatever it is. If I'm in my car, I t sometimes I like to go to the grocery store and like sit in my car for 15 minutes <laughs> b before I enter the grocery store. And it's just like, you gotta just find that time, you know? And I try now to read before bed, which you know, in the past, maybe I'd watch a show. Something, yes. something's got to give. Like I don't watch as much TV now that I have been reading more, but um, it is, it is tricky. I mean, how do you find the time? Like, no, I mean that's the same thing. I don't. Henry and I are into a sh television series right now, which has sort watching? of taken my time away. It's yeah. called The Serpent. It's really. Oh, I've heard of that. It's great, but okay. the point is, what? So then I like stay up a little later and I read yeah. before I go to bed or whatever right. it is, but you're right. It's like scheduling it. And then yeah. once you fall in love with the book, you don't need to then schedule you, it. Then you can't stop. Yeah. yeah. Once and that's you're how into I've been. It, you're into it. Yeah. I've, so, I've just been reading talk. books that I can't stop reading. So I like literally like I'm making dinner with the book there. I mean, I it just, you get addicted. You can't put it down. And that's the best type of reading. Oh, isn't that the best feeling? Yeah. Okay. So talk a little bit. First of all, I just made this claim. I'm not sure why, but I think it's true that I feel like real foodies, people that love food and explore food are readers too. Oh. Do you think that's true? I think so. Well, for sure. I mean, I love to read cookbooks. So yeah. I think that, I mean, and actually when I wrote my cookbook, that was one of the biggest goals for me was to write a book that not only people want to obviously cook from, but people want to read. 
So yeah. I tried to keep every single recipe, like I, I wanted there to be a story behind each um, meal and each dish and each, and because to me, that's what food is about. It, it's about sharing, you know, food all, it comes from life experiences and memories. And right. so I, that was my biggest goal. And actually like the biggest compliment I've had is like, I actually don't even cook from your book. I just like to read it. So I think you're right. I think foodies, I mean, I, I, I love to read cookbooks. That's how I didn't go to culinary school. I just taught myself by watching the Food Network and reading food blogs, cookbooks, um, because it's I think- so, My mom, I have a like distinct memory of my mom sitting at her kitchen table with the cookbook and she mm -hmm. loved to read cookbooks too. She has a great cookbook collection, but she's not even really a cook. You yeah, know, like I know. Totally, there's something about it that's like, and the reason why I even made that claim, which could be totally false is that I feel like people that want to fall into a new place or meet new people, new characters are also probably adventurous eaters. You know, they also yeah. like the idea of trying something new in food. Right, right. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this, or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good morning, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. Yeah. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yeah. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers. We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning to the expression, eyes and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. This is amazing. Yes. Yes. Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is from, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. So, Siri, tell me when you first fell in love with reading. Was there a particular book that you were like, oh, well, I love this? Or author? I'm prepared. Oh, so, my mom loves to read. She like I grew up watching her go to like her book clubs mm -hmm. and um, she, when we were little kids, wrote, read, wrote, she read this book, Little Mother to the Others, to us before bed. Um, and I'm the oldest, I have two younger brothers and sisters and um, well, I have, I have more than that, but um, she would, like this was a time that we actually came together and it's a really old book too, but like we listened, we, we were engaged. It was such a like special moment of the day and I'll always remember that. Um, and so she definitely instilled my love of reading. And I, I was that kid in, in school, like when I got a little older that, that literally got in trouble for reading books. Like I'd be in science, like with my babysitter's club book or whatever it was. Oh, you know, I was really into all the like R.L. Stein. Me too. Did you read Christopher Pike? Yes. Books? You remember the one with the where they went scuba diving and the person yes. got the got oh. the whatever it was called the lung disease because they yes. turned it. Yes, I love. I think I've read books. every Christopher Pike. I was like hooked on those. So I just you know I just and my mom's always like, well, if you're gonna get in trouble in school for something, it's it's probably it's probably good that it's <laughs> reading too much. Um, so I always love to read. I just and I took you know courses in college. Another. Um, one of my favorite things was I took a uh, course on Tony, Tony Morrison novels, which you just had the bluest eye in your book club. And that, I mean, I, I think I've read every single one of her books, just fell in love with, with her writing and her 
stories. Um, and I thought actually about becoming an English major. I went the communications route, but um, mm -hmm. it's just always been something I've loved. I was a communications major and okay. changed to English because my mom was like, you're good at communicating. Yeah, like, yeah. You are. Write writer, read all the We're like the books. same. We were born as well. No, you're born in 80, 81. 81. We're the same. We're 81 communication majors. <laughs> you know what's read. so funny? We love queso. We love queso. <laughs> Okay, so paired with a good book and a margarita, <laughs> and that's it. Oh, yeah. That's my end all be all. But you yeah. know what? So I've noticed speaking to authors or friends, uh, I just talked, interviewed Brandy Carlisle for, for Open Book. I love her music. Love I loved her, music. her so much. She just wrote a really awesome book, which I took a little read with Jenna Brake to read I called see. Broken Horses, which I recommend. Okay. okay. But it's so funny that you can tell, and I'm sure everybody here has experienced this. If, if people are about your same age by what books they read. Like That's I literally true. said to her, she was like, I loved the babysitters club. I loved RL Stein. She said exactly yeah. what you said. And I said, are you almost 40? Are you 40? She goes, yeah, <laughs> we're the same age. Exactly. And I think there's That's something so, funny. so odd. Like, I feel like if my mom was talking to somebody and they talked about the books they read, it right. might be slightly different, but they have that same like, oh, you know, right. we grew our, our up in the same chat. era. I bet they yeah. have the same <laughs> taste, the same yeah. childhood memory. Yep. Um, okay, so what, what what's the one book that changed you? I mean, I know there's probably many, but can you think of one that you were like, yes. Okay. So when, so I've been with Carson for like 15 years now. I've known him to only read one book. Oh yeah, I, I mean, know this. He just like, he actually can like get, he has that, um, he and his sister, they can read and kind of like you, like they can read a book in like two days if they, if they wanted to, they're just fast readers. Whereas I'm like, I'm much, I, I remember once we took a train ride together from upstate New York. And I think you like finished a book while I was like two, chap two chapters in. But anyway, that's, that's an aside. So the one book that Carson read that he was like, you should read this after I'm done, is like in a thousand page epic saga. So it's, it's actually crazy that that's what he chose. I have it here. Because I'm so prepared. <laughs> Look, I love this. You are organized and ready to go. It's okay, called it Shantaram. Is. Have you ever read this? No, but you and Carson have told me yes. about this and I need to write it down now. So okay. yeah, it's literally, let me see how many pages it is. Oh, it's almost a thousand. But it's, like I said, it's like this epic saga of, of uh, it's set in India. It follows this guy's life. It's, um, I, and now it's, it's been almost 10 years because Jack was little when I read it. Um, but it's so moving, so like just thought provoking and, and it's very spiritual. And I've always said like, I need to read this again. It's one of those books that you want to read at different points in your life because mm -hmm. you're going to get something out of it each time. Um, and I haven't reread it. It's, it's, it sits on my nightstand because I just, it meant so much to me. Um, so that's definitely one. What about you? Oh, I love that. I, you know, when you were just saying that, it reminded me of a book called A Little Life. Have you ever read A Little no, Life? No. Okay, and I and I can't and I am not going to pronounce the author's name correctly, so I'm not going to do it. But A Little Life is one of those books that, and there's lots of parts because it. I feel like if I meet somebody on the street, my sister recommended it to me. It's okay. about a group of friends and one particular um, man who who is just complicated and it's like the it's a book that will break your heart and also mm -hmm. it's about all the human experiences okay and it's so close like you read it where and you feel like you're in their life yeah um, and and so anyway it is a beautiful okay. incredible book called a little life it's list. long too okay i like the long ones another one that really over the, and i read this one more recently um the heart's invisible furies yes that is also a very long kind of follows this boy until he's an elderly man. Um, but just I so, love that book too. again, heartbreaking, but funny at moments you're laughing out loud. Like, oh, you just go through the whole, like, I mean, you, you, you feel like you're living his, his life. You're going yeah. through it with him. And I love that book. Tonight, we're on the scene as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. Yeah. We 
are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. 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 We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning. See the expression. Rise and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. This is amazing. Yes. Yes. Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Oh, Tim Talks Books is here. I think oh, he's a mutual Tim. friend of ours. Tim, Tim is the one who recommended um, A Hearts Invisible Hearts Series to me. Tim. He and you are like my book gurus. Like, but you does just Tim agree? I don't, when he says top five favorite, I don't know if he's talking to you or me. Tim, have you read oh. A Little Life? Tim, clarify. Tim, <laughs> tell us if you've Tim. read it. And I went to college people... with Tim, and now he, he lives in Nantucket and, like, works, I mean, he's, like, Tim Talks Books is his, uh, you know. Yeah, and he did a, a read with Jenna. Yes. Um, thing. Post. I'm so Post, happy yes. yeah. he did. He's he's like a, an incredible reader. Right. He works with the two bookstores on Nantucket, and like, he's just awesome. Okay, so 40 Love says A Little Life is one of the best books. Okay, I got to read that. With Tim. I was just, I have, I'm reading, oh, I haven't started it yet, because I started, have you read Hamnet? Yes. So I started that, but then this came, and now I'm like, oh. That's really good. If you're not into Hamnet, take a well, break. It's taking me a second. Like I've heard that it's so beautiful and- It took I, me I, a second too. But it's just taking me a second. And so far I've just been so grabbed by all the books I've read this year that I'm, I'm but I don't want to give up. I hate giving up. Like I do have a couple no, books but that you I know haven't what? finished. You know what about that? Somebody just told me and I was like, yes. I think it was, it was Emma Straub who wrote- Okay, which well, is, I love her. Read I'm just throwing books in here, all adults here. You read her books. I love her too. Yes, and she said this. She said, Tim Huff's books wrote, you said you guys are sweet, but Tim, I want to know, did you read A Little Life? Okay. Yeah, let so, us know. Um, so Emma said, because she owns, you know, a, a bookstore in Brooklyn and a little okay. indie bookstore called Books Are Magic, which I love. Yes. And she she said this, when I was younger, I would I would feel guilty about quitting a book. She's like, now that I have two kids and run a bookstore, I don't. I okay. don't feel guilty anymore. Well, that makes me so, feel so much better. I'm not saying you have Emma, to quit. No, I know. But I just... Um, but you could. I don't think I'll quit, but maybe I could pause. And Great this circle. Sounds, this sounds so It's awesome. so, so good. I love this book so much. So I hope Tim is reading that too. Jenna, um, do you, are you like, do you um, read a book before you see the film? Yes. Like if you haven't read Sally Rooney's books, Conversation with Friends and Normal People. I haven't. So those are really great Wait, too. No, I, I haven't. No. So I and they and Sal, they have a um they Sally, you know, normal people was a okay, good. Yes, a little life top okay. five. I've never been more moved by a book. Oh Thank gosh. You. Now I'm really okay. That'll be after Tim actually just sent me a bunch of books and so I feel like do you ever feel pre well you have to feel pressure because you do this like as yes. your part of your job you have to like I know. but i have my list is getting so long and now i'm like like i just want to neglect my children pressure. all day long and read i feel pressure but i also where are my kids <laughs> i also i know are they there where's goldie no, they're in school happy? goldie's here goldie's gonna if my mom's watching mom come up with goldie yeah she's goldie. like how do i watch an instagram live <laughs> just <laughs> just Click on the little thing. Push watch. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's so it's so interesting because I also think it's okay to realize, like, I've been reading a, a lot of historical fiction for whatever reason, stuff yeah. coming up in the fall, and I'm like, okay, I cannot read any more historical fiction. I need, like, you know, right. more of a mystery. And so I right. think it's okay to allow yourself whatever yeah. you need. You I know, agree. if you've yeah. been reading heavy, go a little lighter. Right. Um, okay. The what would the, these are some really, really good questions. We have a lot of people that ask questions. So um, 
and some of these we already asked for, but I, I love this one. Mary Ann, uh, Mary Ann L, I think seven, I'm so bad at this, 758 <laughs> asks, is there a plan for another cookbook? That's a great question. There isn't a plan. Well, we've, I've been thinking and talking. Um, it's just hard with Goldie being so little. I think I need to wait like a year or two just to where I really have, I mean, I just, I love having all this time with her, especially because she's our last and my other kids are so much bigger and they're all in school. So I really am just trying to soak that up for now. Um, I definitely have, have it in me, I think for another, um, and I have some ideas. Um, so Good. stay tuned. It seems like people are really, really hoping that you do because I've seen it on the comments <laughs> and everybody misses your cooking segments. People I know I miss it too. Well, it's Actually, not... I, I have one coming up. Um, you know, Jackson, my son who has been doing some, um, nightly kids, yeah. um, segments, we're going to do a cooking segment together, I think for an upcoming nightly kids. So that'll, that'll be fun, okay, but I do miss it too. I know. Yeah. Where are you? Come to our show. Hey, today all day, we've got a great show for you on this Friday morning. Let's kick it off with Pop Start. Carson has the latest pop culture news we need to know. Take a look. Olivia Rodrigo and Dr. Anthony Fauci. No, I'm not making the announcement for Dancing with the Stars. These two <laughs> met earlier this week when the pop star visited the White House to lend her voice to the COVID-19 vaccine effort. Rodrigo, who has a whopping 28 million followers across her combined social media channels, recorded special videos for the White House, including this one wow. that we have an exclusive first look at. <laughs> it features the pair responding to fan tweets about the vaccine. And lucky you, you're going to get to hear Dr. Fauci's favorite <laughs> concert of all time. Wear your mask and get your vaccines. I need to see Olivia Rodrigo live in concert in the first row. If I tell you the greatest concert that I've ever been to, you're gonna faint. Because <laughs> the reason is I'm so old, it goes back to the late 1950s at the Paramount Theater in New York City, which was a Motown concert with the Temptations, the Four Tops, I'm sorry. No, oh I'm a really, I'm a really old guy. Awesome. She's like, who are these temptations yeah, you speak of? Yeah, <laughs> I was at that concert. Google for tops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Temptations. Uh, awesome. You can find more of their conversation in just a little bit over on Today.com. Next up, Antonio Banderas, the actor, is the latest to join the cast of the highly anticipated franchise sequel, oh. Indiana Jones Five. Now, details on who he's going to play or portray, we do not know yet, but we do know for sure the latest chapter in the series will feature the return of the fedora class. Harrison Ford himself reprising his iconic title role. Although the film, which is currently in production across the pond at London's Pinewood Studios, did recently have a minor setback in shooting. Last month, Ford sustained an injury to his shoulder during a fight scene, causing the 79-year-old actor to take a little break from filming. But Indiana Jones 5, set your calendar, set for July of next year. And next up, James Gandolfini from Mob Boss to Paper Pusher? Is it possible? Well, the actor best known for the HBO hit series The Sopranos was almost cast in a very different role on NBC's long-running sitcom The Office. What? Soprano stars Michael Imperioli and uh, Steven Shrippa breaking the news to Ricky Gervais on a recent episode of their podcast, Talking Sopranos. And according to Shrippa, James was in talks to replace Steve Carell no. following Steve's departure from The Office what? in season seven. Wow. I think before James Spader and after Carell, they offered Jim, I want to say $4 million to play him for the season. And... HBO paid him $3 million not to do it. That's a fact. They paid him that to, to keep the legacy of The Sopranos pure. Well, I guess that, and also he had a deal with them. He was doing the night of. He night was of. developing that. Oh, right, right, right. Wow. Okay. wow. I mean, there that's, you go. I've never heard of that. What a great not deal. To do it. Can you yeah. pay me three million not to? I know exactly. Wow. To sit around. They say there's a the saying: the greatest, the most powerful phrase in Hollywood is no. Wow. Yeah. Maybe in life. Maybe mm -hmm. you start with no. I do. <laughs> you do. Some people, you know, no. you've heard the phrase start with yes. Yeah. Roker is like no. Start with oh, no. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> Coming up next on Today Talks, it's the Overheard on Third segment with Al, Dylan, and Chanel you don't want to miss. Stay with us. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Yeah. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yeah. Cheers to you. Cheers. 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 
We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning. See the expression? Rise and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. It's amazing! Yes! Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I can track this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Welcome back today on the third hour. Al, Dylan, and Chanel dish on the latest buzzy stories and give their take. Check it out. Time for a vacation edition of Over Third, all about vacations. Huffington Post collecting tweets, capturing just how packing for a trip. <laughs> These are out, so funny. That's right. They bring out our different sides of our personalities. Okay. Uh, for example, Mo saying, me packing for a 10-day trip packs 30 outfits just in case. Me at home wears one T-shirt for 10 days. <laughs> True. It's true. Why do we bring so many I outfits? I don't know. I don't just, know. Just in case. <laughs> I think that may be, and I don't want to generalize, I think well, that's more of a female thing. Right, to have you want true. just, yeah. well, just in case. Because you have like clothes. a nice night outfit yeah. versus yeah. like a casual night outfit because you don't know what that night And will it's the entail. anticipation. That's what vacation is yeah. all about. How that about this one? Like, go ahead. <laughs> what, that doesn't sound like a vacation? Yeah. Twitter user at mom transparent one says her favorite part of packing is finding all of the things around my house that haven't been touched in years, <laughs> but I suddenly feel I'll need to use while I'm gone. That need is so them. true. Again, yes. need them. There exactly. you go. It's uh, guys don't feel that. That's funny. Okay, See, look at this packing one. for kids. I realized the sheer amount of toys I bring. I'm like, why do I ever bring toys on vacation? Because yeah. there's I know. like they could run around stuff. the hallway. Exactly. exactly. All they exactly. need to do is find a box. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Here's, here's good. a guy. Here's Sam. Yeah, Sam D. Cress says his packing routine is to pack for a trip in one hour, but then unpack from the trip for seven days. Sam is my spirit animal. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. that's leave my, the open suitcase. Oh my gosh. Shake out the clean and, rubs and, out and of it. That's right. In <laughs> fact, you you what is it your thing? So I, 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 I'm a big list person. Mm -hmm. So I write every single day right. and what each of us will need for every single day. So it's like if we're going on a beach trip, you know, you need your bathing suit and a cover up for the right. daytime. You mm -hmm. need your evening outfit. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. And PJs. this is for real. No, these <gasps> Brian thinks these are ridiculous. They are. Because he just throws everything into a bag. But I mean, then it, then I have a list on the back of that. It's like, OK, I need sound machine. I need the camera for the boys. I need this. I need that. I need the sleep sack. That I would need... give me anxiety. I would really? need a vacation from Yes, yeah, check it all off. See, but doesn't that give you calming. like um, it makes you nervous? Just to feel Once like I have it written down, I'm not nervous anymore. Oh, because uh -huh. I'm all nervous done. until it's written down. Fair enough. What about for you? Yeah. For like you're going to Tokyo, for example. Yeah, but see, I, I think it's easier for guys because you know, look, look I'm, it's going to be hot. I'm, I'm packing five, pretty much I think the same color polo shirts, a couple <laughs> of jeans. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll wear a jacket over there because I always believe you should have a jacket when you're flying. Do you check? And, oh, really? Oh, yeah. He's a fancy yeah, that, flyer. No, not a fancy. He's just that. Look, I grew up in the age of when flying was a, a, a privilege, almost. Right. You know, and yeah. so my dad always made us wear jackets. So, so you'll wear jeans, whatever, but you put on a sport coat or a yeah. blazer. Yeah, and exactly. Fly. Mm -hmm. That's All right. right. And that's Speak why it looks so put together. That's true. Yeah. Speaking of traveling, uh, a parent took to Reddit to share their realization that a vacation with kids is not really oh. a vacation for parents. So true. Yes, that's absolutely. It's time away. Yeah. It is not right. a vacation. Yeah. It's, well, when your kids are smaller. Yeah, because you know. you're on duty. Yeah, yeah. You're constantly. Right now, it is like the nightmare traveling, especially on a plane with Oliver. Mm -hmm. I mean, trying to keep him occupied and trying. I mean, it's just you're constantly on the clock. Yeah. You know what helps? Somebody told me, oh, my doctor back in Philly, he said, take something on the plane. This is especially when they were little that they haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. And so then when they would sit down on the plane or for a road trip, it's something new. That'll give you an extra 20 minutes, right. maybe. Right. See, I mean, Calvin, I could always just ply with food. I mean, he <laughs> even at a restaurant, he'll sit there for three hours if you just keep feeding him. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver, as soon as he's done, he's like, I don't want it. He just throws just like, it and just throws it. Parents Magazine has a couple of tips. Uh, take. Take it slow. Oh, yeah. Don't cram in so many activities, which I, it's taken me a while. 
but I finally realized because I was one of those people. I planned stuff for the family, and then, and then we'd get there, and and even though we had gone through all of this, I said, okay, we're going to do this, this, this. Great, great, great. We get there, we don't want to do this. I know. <laughs> like, well, I love that you just realized that your kid, your youngest is like 20 years old. I know that was just embarrassing. <laughs> and then they said, also go easy on the rules, like ice cream. Sure, why not? Let them you know do what it. I mean? There yeah. you go. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, we're getting cheesy and trying out a very unusual new flavor of ice cream. Stay with us. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. Yeah. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Hoda is going to renew their vows right here. Yeah. Cheers to you. Cheers. 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 We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning. See the expression? Rise and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Welcome back today on Hoda and Jenna. It's a very surprising best fan friend Friday. Check it out. So you've been busy. Have I? <laughs> I've heard for the, on the streets Sources. that you've been busy. Watch what happens live. Oh, you know what's crazy? Um, Andy turned the lights on in the clubhouse. Was it the first one? It, I don't. It wasn't the first one, but, but it was reason. one of the yeah, I, I guess initial ones. It was cool because they had that little audience. Like if you go and do Andy's show, it's crazy yes. because number one, it's such a popular show. But when you walk in, it's a clubhouse. It's got like enough seating for 25 people and whatever. But it was so fun. And what made it so much fun is not only that when I saw Andy, it was so emotional for me to see him because I hadn't seen him in a year and a half, but also uh, Miss Patty LaBelle was there. It was just like... Like a dream? Patty walked into the, to, to our little dressing room and she went up to Laura and she said, I'm, I'm Patty. And Laura goes... Hey, the, ha, ha. <laughs> and she goes, oh my God, she just introduced herself like, I'm Patty LaBelle. Oh my God, I know it was Patty LaBelle. Like it's, but she has that way. She greets everybody. It was really And of course, y'all played a little game, right? Should we, should we take a look? Oh, oh yeah, it was called This Just Speaks to Me. I'm scared. Mom jeans. Do mom jeans <laughs> no, speak to you? No, they do not. Okay. What about handcuffs in the bedroom? Do you like uh, your man to cuff you up? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't. No. no. What about no. Benefer 2.0? <laughs> oh, my God. You're in for this, aren't you? Can I tell you something? Yeah. I am in. Wow. I'm in yes. it. Come on. Okay. Why not? How do you feel about your crush, Blake Shelton, getting married in blue jeans? Oh, in blue jeans. Yeah. I thought you were just going to say getting, getting married. married. Getting married, period. Getting I thought he was adorable. Yes. I thought that that was, um, that was big. How did you feel about I didn't him? know he got married in blue jeans. I didn't either, but how did you feel about him getting married? I never even asked you that question. It makes me feel like a terrible journalist. <laughs> <laughs> I felt happy for him. True love is when you're happy for someone else's happiness. <laughs> <laughs> if you let him as a butterfly fly away and he fly back, you know it's meant to be. Well, watch what happens live with Andy Cohen and, air Sunday and Patty Thursday. LaBelle, she was really amazing. Was she awesome? Yeah, she's just the coolest, well, tune by in the for, way. Tune in. Yeah, right? watch Patty. She's really good. Okay. I was, uh, but she was great. Okay, <laughs> it's National Ice Cream Day. So we thought we would celebrate with the newest flavor, and I'm kind of scared. 
Jerry. Oh, by the way, is... hi, Jerry. Jerry Shane. Wait, this is Jerry without his mask. He oh, without just didn't have his mask oh, on. Why. See? Thank you. A long this, time. Now, this looks, it's called... Well, Kraft <gasps> teamed up with Lewin ice cream to create... This is. These are two of my favorite things, as if two of my favorite things had a baby. Mac and cheese and ice cream, and Hoda's looking a little worried. Cheese ice cream? Mac and cheese. It also has pasta. Well, I like pasta, but let's see. Okay. Okay. Let's try They it. wanted to combine Jerry, two of the most Jerry iconic comfort foods. Jerry Ready? would not One, try One, two, three. It tastes just like mac and cheese frozen. But I think it's good. It's salty. It's like salty ice cream. <laughs> oh, it does taste just like... Mm -hmm. It tastes like mac and cheese. The aftertaste reminds me of my kids' dinner. Ooh, truffle. Can you imagine adding a little truffle or lobster, as Jerry said? Listen. Okay, so anyway, it's limited edition. You can get it at Van Wellen's Scoop Shops and the website, so while supplies last. I bet you people are going to eat that up if you like mac and cheese. I don't think it's gross. In fact, I'm going to go back for a little more. I can't. I, I, it's just not ringing my bell. I like chocolate and caramel stuff. Mm -hmm. Caramel. You, Is it caramel or caramel? caramel. Mm. It's caramel. Okay. What do you call it? I think I, I don't know. I think I switch. I think I go caramel, <clears throat> caramel. Anyway. Wow. The aftertaste is what so, kind of kicks you. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so we made it to the end of the week, so that means it's time for Best Fan Friend Friday. Oh, here we go. We're about to celebrate and surprise 73-year-old Kathy Widner and her daughter Cheryl. They're from Rivervale, New Jersey. Cheryl, she, uh, it, she's a wardrobe supervisor on Broadway. Yeah, so she moved back home during quarantine, and at 73, her mom, Kathy, works as a data analyst, and hopefully her boss isn't watching. Oh, because she takes a break to watch our show. Oh, and they have a nice little cocktail. Let's give them a ringy ring, okay, shall we? Cool, let's do it. Okay. Kathy and Cheryl. Mm-hmm. Kathy and Cheryl. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Hi. Cheryl. Hi. Hi. It's Hoda and Jenna. How are you? Hi. No, it's yeah. not. Girl, Kathy, yes, it is. <laughs> now, listen, Kath, <laughs> Kath, I have to tell you something, Kath. You came to celebrate your 70th birthday with us on the plaza. We didn't get a chance to meet. I was bumming. So I just wanted to make oh sure God. that you got a personal phone call so we could say no. hello. Yes. <laughs> this is all for real. We're we, calling you. We, yes. Hoda was so bummed she I missed you. Bummed. So oh we decided to call you. Uh, what? Yes. <laughs> no, this, this, is a, this is a joke. Right? No, no, it's not a joke. How are, wait, okay. how have you been oh, living oh together? God. Your daughter did this. Your daughter's she loves you so much. I like your sparkly hair. What's going on? It looks cute. <laughs> yeah. What are those highlights? Sparkly highlights? Yes. yes. Oh, they're I called like. fairy lock. They're oh, adorable. They look so good. <laughs> All right. So wait, we have a little. Uh, we have a little. I think quiz. we want to play a game since yeah. you guys watch every oh. morning. Okay. Okay. You're our best yeah. fan Ew. friends. All right. Okay. So here's We're the game. Super. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. Here's the question. Yes. Uh oh. You got it. Whose closet? Did we raid this week for our oh. weekly Tuesday Tuesday where viewers oh, go and look, vote? Totally confident. They know it. Whose was Who's it? Donna. Donna. Adorable. Donna. Yes. Adorable. That is correct. She's now known as Donna Rama. Yeah, we call her Donna Rama. <laughs> Donna but that Rama. is correct. And guess what? We wanted to make sure that you guys have the best viewing experience when you're watching us. So we're sending you a brand new JVC 58 inch HD Roku Woo! Smart a TV. Big old TV. Oh, yeah. No. Yes. It's Kat. coming your way. Kat, next time you come to the plaza. <laughs> We're going to find you, okay? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. You're so cute. Don't die. Don't okay. die. I can't. Thank I you so much. This. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, and if you happen to be one of our most loyal viewers or you want to nominate somebody who is, head to HodaAndJenna.com, and maybe we'll call you next. Now for some Friday fun we like to call Donna Rama. Okay, Donna, who are we playing for today? I okay, mean, who's ladies. the reigning champ and the other person playing yep, for? I see you in your tiara. Let's figure out who you're playing for this week, shall we? Mm -hmm. All right, let's spin that wheel. And on Team Hoda, we have Brenda Quo from Vernon Hills, Illinois. And on Team Jenna, we have Deidre Risen from Conyers, yes. Georgia. All right, come on, Brenda. Let's take it. Let's take <laughs> right. it, Brenda. Nope. Hoda, as we've discussed, you are in the lead, so you're mm -hmm. the current owner of the Donner okay. Tierra. But if you lose this week, Jenna, it's all yours. I've always wanted to and take you the see crown. It. Wait, from you, it looks like I don't even have it on. Well, it's sure. My head is so... Why don't you just... Because you can't... It's, un it's, it's uncomfortable, I but it looks great. I just want to touch it because I'm... Oh. 
<laughs> and that's what matters. I just Jenna, touch it so you I can't can touch it, it, it until it's your turn. Right, okay. Well, gotta well, get through this game. Okay, okay, we're ready. Today we'll test your Americana knowledge in a game we're calling Truth or July. Here's how it works. I'll read you three statements about America. Two are facts and one is a lie. Okay. So you guys have to let me know which you think is a lie. Okay. Hoda, I'm again, kind of you're in the lead, Hoda, so I'm you're ready. I'm first. ready. Okay, Hoda, here we go. Cows outnumber humans in Montana. George Washington was born on the 4th of July. NYC's East River is not actually a river. Which is the lie? Uh, I think George Washington was not born on the 4th of you July. You are correct. Dang, 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 dang. He was born on February 22nd. I was going to say that, but you went ahead. The origin <laughs> of President's Day. Day. Exactly. I knew that. Mm -hmm. All right, Jenna, let's see if you know this one. Canadians own the Mall of America. Abe Lincoln is in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. New Mexico does not observe daylight saving time. Okay, um, Abe Lincoln is not in the Wrestling <laughs> Hall of Fame. He actually is. Oh, Can you believe it? So sad. Canada doesn't own the Mall of America? Sad. Hawaii, and it's actually New Mexico does not observe daylight saving time. Hawaii and Arizona do not observe no, daylight saving time. That is such a trick New Mexico question. does. Yeah, it seems I know. It seems obvious. Uh, it's even a trick question when I read it. Sure. Okay. Hoda. I uh -huh. see how this is going. <laughs> Hoda, in Oklahoma, it is illegal to eavesdrop. Abe Lincoln invented the swivel chair, and the word Pennsylvania is misspelled on the Liberty Bell. Which is the lie? The lie is Pennsylvania being misspelled on the Liberty Bell. The lie uh. is Abe Lincoln invented the swivel chair. Actually, they're not Thomas bring, Jefferson did. They're not going to bring Abe Lincoln in twice. Well, uh. you never know. <laughs> He's so tall. It's tough stuff. Okay, okay. Jenna. Okay. There is no official language in the United States. The Empire State Building has its own zip code. And in Virginia, it is illegal to chew gum while dancing. Which is the lie? Oh, that's weird. Which is the lie? That's a weird one. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I think that the, oh, no, there's no official language in the United States. Jenna, Jenna, Jenna. I think English is, so what's the other one? I don't know. The lie is the Virginia one. Oh, it's, it's actually illegal perfectly to chew gum. legal in Virginia to chew gum while dancing. <laughs> Well, you know, we're going to let, that, really hard gonna to let get. that No, I think you still might. I only got one right. I know that English is the official language, but I thought maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I don't speak it that well. Okay, Donna? <laughs> All right, next. You speak it perfectly. Maybe okay. Maybe Okay. Hoda. Yes. Manhattans are an ant species unique to New York City. The letter Q appears in only one state name, and there is a palace made entirely of corn. Where's the lie? The lie is Manhattan ants are an uh, ant. No. Q. The lie Q. is the letter Q. Q. Can I feel it? Jenna, no, redemption. You can't. No, no, unfortunately, you can't. So but, but, but we know that you know that. Okay. <laughs> so you feel better? <laughs> All right, All right Jenna. Jenna. It's your turn. Okay. New All you have to do is get one. Yeah. I got one I know, right. but this just is get a hard one. Jenna, you, get you basically I have to my, get this my one. My ego you feels get bad it. about no, the English. You have to get Don't worry about it. Sweat off your back. Okay. Yes. Jenna. The first one's correct. It was wait, one. Wait, wait. Let me them. read. Okay, okay. Let me do my job. Okay. okay. New York was once New Amsterdam. Yes. London Bridge is in Arizona, and the first Pizza Hut was called the Sauce Shack. Okay, I don't oh. think the Pizza Hut was called the Sauce Shack. You are correct. Yes. It was called the Pizza Hut. Wow. See, of course it had good. to be about food. See, good okay. one. Okay. Okay, this is the tiebreaker. Oh, really we and have one. See? Okay. Hoda. <laughs> yes. West Virginia is home to the first Cheesecake Factory. In Hawaii, it is illegal to have a billboard. In Tennessee, it is illegal to share your <laughs> Netflix password. I'm going to go with... West Virginia did, was not the first cheesecake. Oh my goodness! What? You How did you read that? I grew up in West Virginia. And you didn't ever see a cheesecake factory there? <laughs> it was actually in uh, Beverly Hills. California. Do I have time? For you have time for one more. Oh don't. wow, that's too so bad. That means Hoda, you're still the reigning champ. And unfortunately, there's getting a bigger and bigger deficit. I think that we TR need is a bigger word. <laughs> no, it's Jenna, there is always another hey, Donna. Rosa. The, so Team Hoda wins. The folks at Barnes and Noble are sending Brenda a $300 okay. gift card. Jenna, Deidre, don't worry. You will receive a Hoda and Jenna t-shirt sure. and travel mug. And Hoda, hmm. you get to keep that uncomfortable thing. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> Ever so. All right. If you want to play along in Donorama, you can head to HodaandJenna.com. Hit the connect button. Today Talks continues after the break. Al, Dylan, and Chanel and Craig go on a mini golf adventure you don't want to miss.
The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. A couple of weeks ago, we faced off as we watched storms roll in, playing some backyard games. News nerds came out on top. <laughs> so this time, we went to Pier 25 Mini Golf here in New York City to settle the score again. All right, ready for an in-person buddy up? Let's go again. Yes. I want to win again. That's right, because we have soundly yeah. trans <laughs> trounced you both. I'm ready to win. Come on, on losers. <laughs> What a great role model you Let's are for your go. children. The third hour gang getting back together on a hot summer day for a mini version of mini golf. We had just five holes to determine whether the news nerds or weather wizards would come out on top. Purple, I'm going to do green. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Huh? Rules, simple. Each player, four strokes. Win the hole, move on. Didn't take very long for the sabotaging to start. All right, here we go. <laughs> But soon, we were up and putting. Yes! Yeah! All right! Great start! Woo! Great start! Go, 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 go. That's what I'm talking about! Woo! News nerds up by one, but not even the sound of New York City sirens could stop my Dylan. Go, 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 go. Oh, God. So rude, and it's so echoey in here. Wow. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Yes! Oh! Hole in one! There we go! Oh. Clear. We're tied one whole thing. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. She blew it. Come on, news nerd. Come on, big mouth. Wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Now. Oh, come on, baby. Oh. 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 Be careful, you're pregnant. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all oh. right. If you drop this in, we're tied for the hole. There yes, you go. Yes, yes, Come on, we're still in it, baby. Tie break the hole. No pressure. All right, round, up, down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yes! No! Oh, yes! Woo. Yes! <laughs> nice shot. After Dylan's second hole in one of the game, things not looking too good for the news nerds. Until Chanel pulled out her terrific talent. That's enough. Hold down, baby. Hold down. Looks good. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Get in the oh, hole. Oh no! Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Yes! Get in the hole. Yes! yes! Get in the hole. Yeah, baby. They win that hole. Pretty impressive. So, all coming down to the fifth and final hole. News nerds victorious against weather wizards. Oh! Uh-oh, 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 oh 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 Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Go, 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 go! Oh, that's not good. Oh, oh, oh! This strategy of having no strategy appears to be paying off. Yep. It was up to Chanel to win it all. You've been doing this all day. All day. All you gotta do is drop this puck. Ready? Over. Yeah. We finally conquered the evil demon. Congratulations. Woo! 
Congratulations. Why do you have to be so nice? Thank I don't want to be nice. Congratulations. You are a Come sore on, loser. Come on, bring it in. No. no. Yes, Sam. No. Come on. No, no. Man, that's disgusting. I don't, Come I don't on. like my own Come sweat. Come I don't want Come yours. On. You say it. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> it's funny. In fact, I would tell you that if I knew you were going to hug me, I would have forfeited. <laughs> <laughs> Just walked away. Because your ride was so sweaty. We got a little sweaty. Oh, oh yeah. man, it was oh, nasty. We're going to need a, a mega rematch because now I think it's two to, it's two, two, to two in two. overall yeah. buddy ups. We lost in so. ping pong. We lost in Pictionary. Pictionary. Right, so, but we won the last. Oh, that's right. We won the last two. We won the last two. And of course, we won it. So we need something big. Something big. Guys, let's let's raise a glass. Yes. yes. To what, back SG? To, each other. to summer. To all of us. To us? Yes. Oh, to yeah. yeah. us. To being back. Yeah. Oh, my Carson, I didn't get a tap. To one foot tap away. Tap that. To yeah. being together. Yes. 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 Cheers. No mask. No mask. No mask. mask. No mask. Yes. No mask. Yes. I can hear you. Mm. Oh, that's mm. yummy. Remember Ow. last summer? Oh, Good choice. You what like the Aperol oh, Spritz? Good. This is a brilliant choice. It's I'm glad summer, I copied you. Summer in a glass. Well, summer in a glass. I remember right. having too many. Okay. Much. How about when they put our chairs so close together? Yeah. It worked. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I that, was a, I mean, that, was a, that was a glaring moment. Yeah. We're I all there every things, morning. I knew uh, things were better when I could sit on your lap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, when they let yeah. us sit next to each other. I've always said that. We've been, <laughs> we've been inching our chairs closer we together. Have. I don't think we realized when we were spread that far apart how weird it was mm -hmm. right and all of a sudden once we start moving closer we were like look at us we're on top of each other right. but then it's like nothing's normal yeah. yeah but i remember looking at the monitor and going oh wow so this close this is the way it used to be right uh -huh. we're, we're close again but carson you were like you were kind of nervous you were it was just fast it was yeah. like for so long you go giving that atm space everywhere you go yeah. to people out of yeah. respect mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we're just so close and it, was, it took a minute for me to yeah. get used to it mm -hmm. you were still wearing your mask on set well longer than on the voice I, there's different rules still in society at various workplaces, yeah. and so the voice has a different set of rules than the Today Show. That's true. So I was wearing a mask. I, I didn't. Remember when we were all in the studio together? Mm -hmm. When we yep. all yep. finally got in the studio yep. together? I thought that was, was one of those yes. moments. I don't care how spread out we it were. It was the yeah. week before it was Labor school. Day. Was that the, was that I, the I, week I, we finally Well, hold on. Let's back up. When we all first got together in the oh. backyard, yes. yeah. Just seeing each other right. was a win in yes. that moment, right? Yeah, physically. Forget that we were six feet apart. Yeah. Right. So to get to this point right. is Look like us, a home run. Up. I know. Right? It was emotional <sighs> when we all got together again. Yeah. Sorry, mom said don't tell No, mom. that's okay. It's okay. It's all right. We won't no, it came to the wrong place. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, outside the workspace, your daughter's wedding. Yeah. And folks were sweating and dancing and mm -hmm. singing and mm -hmm. hugging. Everybody like all... was vaccinated. Yes. And, and having you guys there was... Uh, meant the world and it, and it was it was we heard from more and more people hey wow that what a great it was like a coming out party it was right. you know and it was really terrific and i was happy to pay for it <laughs> <laughs> it was an expensive coming out just party. before that <laughs> wedding the new york islanders were in the playoffs mm -hmm. and they had just opened up their place so i went to that game mm -hmm. and that was twenty one thousand people wow. in the barn screaming at a you know a big time sporting event that felt like, oh my gosh, we are back. I think it's starting to feel that way. I felt that way at the uh, gymnastics trials. It was weird, yeah. man. You sat there, and I actually think a lot of the girls were a little nervous mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah. They were so used to practicing in a vacuum, oh, and suddenly yeah. they're in a stadium mm -hmm. full of people. But it did feel like old times, mm -hmm. and also just reminded you like what you're missing. And the last, the, the, over this last week, just spontaneously, people have been showing up at the window. Yes, yes. Yeah. more people. More people. Yeah. I mean, a lot Every of day. people. With signs. And, and going, like out, yeah. going out and fist bumping people. And just, it's like. It's well, the taking, wedding we did that Hoda uh -huh. officiated the other day, that that mm -hmm. time we spent working mm -hmm. on the plaza mm -hmm. felt like the old days. Yeah, that was the first time that we were actually interacting, right. standing we, outside. You know, mm -hmm. and that was the other thing. We what? came here last week with our family, mm -hmm. and it was like, it literally, it felt like n no time had passed. We were here. here Anthony Scottos. was helping us. Uh -huh. we, I mean, the place was packed. Everybody was having a good time. It felt so mm -hmm. good. Let me ask walking you. into a store and oh. not having to wear a mask, I mm -hmm. almost feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I yeah. say, should I wear a mask? And they right. say, well, if you're vaccinated, you don't have you to. Don't have and to. I'm like, I'm vaccinated. Right. I'll just wear my mask anyway. Right. I just don't, I can't, it's hard it's to hard. make that transition. It's not like turning off right. the light. Right. Oh, great. That's what, yeah. I mean, you had yours on today. 
Right? Yeah, I'm just still trained, mm-hmm. and I, I, you know, we've all worn our masks for so long out of mm-hmm. respect for other people. Yeah, so right. sure. I don't want to walk into a place all of a sudden without a mask with this bravado of like I'm double vaxxed and I'm the man yeah. and I'm yeah. out of respect for somebody else. You know, it's I hard know. to break yeah. that. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this? Or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. So one of the other uh, like big, big changes, and we were thinking about this. I remember we were talking about a year ago from right now when literally there was, literally, there was occasionally a nurse walking by. Yeah. That's all you yeah. saw outside. Oh, yeah. That was it. That was not it. even or not construction even construction worker. Or, that, was that was it. There was no. nobody else. There was a time when it was just you and our camera operator, Mason, mm-hmm. and no one else. Right. In nobody was there. And then you fast forward to like that kind of eerie, weird feeling mm-hmm. of, and my first words I think I ever uttered every morning were, were the two of us. That was the first mm-hmm. conversation yeah. you ever had was, was that one. But fast forward to now, you guys, we look outside. Yeah. Coldplay was on the oh, plaza. Yeah. We had her on the plaza. We're going to have more people on the plaza. Tourists people, are walking by. Tourists yep. are walking That's by. That's what I got. All of a sudden, looking out while you guys are doing the news and stuff, so, and looking out and seeing people just strolling on 50th Street. Without, yeah, without masks without off. It's funny, yeah. it's like, I don't think we'll take these things for granted mm-hmm. anymore, nope. seeing people who come to the plaza or having music out there, or even the people that we work with. When, when mm-hmm. they started adding back our camera mm-hmm. operators, mm-hmm. the sound guys, yeah. the floor mm-hmm. directors, mm-hmm. 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 the right. props folks. Yeah, hair and makeup. Let's, mm-hmm. let's just well, light a candle. Some of us raise don't a glass, glass. Some some of hair and makeup. Hair and makeup. <laughs> Everybody yeah. said amen. Yeah, right. amen. When are they going to bring the teleprompter back to the yeah. studio? Yeah. Yeah. Most important Jenny thing. is back. She's yeah, she's back. Okay, she's okay. in the studio. That's she's why back. Pop Star was The so other thing smooth. that was, yeah. was so right. amazing to me was mm-hmm. how quickly, it, it, you forgot how quickly it went away. I mean, like, you and I were the first ones out. Mm-hmm. You know, and all oh, right, right, and right. All, right. It was like, wait, what? Right, and, lights and, out. Okay, two weeks. Oh, no, wait, not so fast. But it was amazing how quickly it all shut down. It's taking a little while to come back, but it's worth it. It was also amazing how quickly everyone adjusted, like yeah. in terms of our workplace. Yeah. Folks like this, the crews, like setting up those home studios. Our technical and, staff. Like without a, like, oh, oh really? Yeah. They miss, didn't miss a beat at all. No. I remember after 9-11 when I was at MTV in Midtown, we were contemplating, are we going to do another show the next day? And quickly it was decided we couldn't because the bridges and tunnels were closed yeah. and we couldn't get a crew to Times Square. We couldn't get a camera guy. Wow. And during this pandemic, NBC News was incredible how quickly oh, yeah. we were up running because people need information and in yeah. our business, no matter what's happening in the world at any cost, there are those outside of the people sure. that you see on TV sure. that truly make it happen. I mean, it was pretty shocking. And I think, you know, you could argue that we got a lot more interviews, mm-hmm. a lot of yeah. people who wouldn't have normally been on this show because we yeah. could get them through Zoom. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden you realize that you can have good conversations yeah. with people all across the country quickly without flying them in, mm-hmm. without all those things. But That was actually one of my most favorite parts of the pandemic. Like, Hugh Jackman, it's like, oh, wow. 
he lives like us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Behind him. Oh, yeah. The backgrounds were a big... That oh, was yeah, everybody. Part the Zoom of the rooms. Yes. You know? Yeah. People looking. Oh, look, what's there? Room Raider was that. Uh, Room Raider. Or how about the ring light that makes you oh, makes your wrinkles oh, yeah. disappear? Like, yeah. do you put I that ring light over? I discovered that way too late in the pandemic. Me, See, I, the pro- I just got one last week. I'm so <laughs> mad. Yeah, like See, but if you wear glasses... Where's this god light been my whole life? has it been? I love... But that is the one part. Because I'm... I'm an AV nerd, and and I loved playing. And every day we had stuff coming in from B and H from different different audio visual places. Like, Look at you it! Loved that. I loved oh, it. Yeah. Okay, I got a sixty inch monitor. Right. You I got this. One of the first I got that. ones, Al, who had it going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, you literally had was all in, your gadgets in, the garage. Oh, yeah. in your garage. garage. You had an iPad. You had and he got all kicked out of the garage. Gadgets. Yeah. And he was in the kitchen. He got right. kicked out of the kitchen. I right. was pleased when you stopped wearing the Oswego shirts every day, though, because for a Did while. You, I think Deborah. Yeah. Well, Deborah. Between Deborah and Craig, it was like you know you got to step this up. Yeah. And then and then you went to the zippy hoodie, the zippy thing, and. I, like I went to the half zip. Half zip. Went to the half zip. And then you graduated. Went to the half zip, yeah. you know. But yeah. now we get to see you in Sears but Sacrifice Pocket Square. Glasses. Oh. The, you know what I do Pocket miss? watch. Every you know what I do miss? What? I do Ducky miss Derby. seeing Vale and Charlie. Oh, um, yeah. That, I have to say, watching them pop up, literally, it's like, it was like so calming and it felt so at home. I still remember mm. just like calming watching them. Calming for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm like, excuse me, Mr. <laughs> Defense Secretary. Get out of here. Right. I don't know how you pulled that off, but even <laughs> Just at that 6.30 tease, they all were clamoring to get yeah. on. And I remember thinking how that's like the coolest, yeah. calmest Little thing Little kids with bed yeah. head. Uh-huh. Yeah. Don't, don't forget about her, her live-in tech as well. Yeah. Oh, Feldy. yeah, Feldy. Feldy oh, was Feldy. amazing. Oh, yeah. Mike Feldy. Was like, he was on yeah. headset. Mike, operations Mike, manager. You and Mike, my husband could be like in a relationship yeah. because of the AV. Like yes. he, he loved that tech stuff so much. It made all his dreams come true. He would dial in every morning, set his alarm. And he, I, I, I remember ready. listening, you were doing... There was uh, some problem with the mic, and he's troubleshooting. Oh my god! Yeah, I never into it. Oh, he's so into yeah. it. Yeah. And by the way, the graphics department. Jack. Oh. No, Jack. Jack. Jack Daly. Jack needs, Daly. That get a little more. Jack box. needs an agent. I mean, he. We get stopped now, and <laughs> people are like, "Yo, you're the kid that holds the sign." Like, he. Are you serious? The people is, just. Where they recognize the arms. That started out of an. Ass- yeah, he's like, "Look, it's me. That's me." <laughs> um, it started out of necessity because once field ops came and put the studio in the house, I actually needed help. Yeah. Because, you know, we have a newborn in the house with four children. Yeah. And so I was, you know, commissioning help from my children. And, and Jackson how, did it every single day. How did day. it feel, Carson, when you came back to the studio? It like, felt great. Yeah. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I started to harbor a little bit of guilt. I mean, I love mm-hmm. my kids so much. I thought this is the, and I felt bad because it came at the cost of a pandemic where people were losing their lives. Sure. But I was so selfishly happy to be home with my kids yeah. because I travel so much and I yeah. never get a chance to see them. I thought, God, yeah. I can work yeah. from home. Yeah. As soon as I'm done at 9.01, yeah. about, I'm in my my yeah. bathing suit already and my nice supper and I'm gonna yeah. play with the kids and yeah. I loved that part. Um, but after a while, the professional in me wanted to be in a studio. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't move to New York to stay at home and work from right. home. I moved to right. be with my colleagues, to be in the environment yeah. that excites me and that we're lucky enough to get to do every day. So going back to see you guys, going back to doing the job was really important. Yeah. Yeah. It was fulfilling again. Mm-hmm. Being home's mm-hmm. great, yeah. Yeah. Sure. only for a, a finite time. amount of yeah. time. Tonight, we're on the scene as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Perseverance, inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. That's just 
Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. How are your right. kids? How you did know, Del and Sibby do? Del and Sibby, I, again, from the very beginning, I, I was so impressed with how quickly they adapted. Yeah. And they've, they've done the same on the yeah. back end. Like, they've, yeah. you know. Plus, your wife was a superstar. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, she gets props. Basically. Lindsay was Those jokes lady. every day on yeah. line. Still, still going. Still going. Oh, the pr the prayer, the yeah, prayer section, the prayer them. section yeah. every morning to start to start school. No, she was, we would not have probably gotten through the pandemic had it not been for my wife. Wow. Um, that's not, you know, that's not yeah. hyperbole. And she got COVID, right? She did. Yeah. She, she had COVID. And go through that too. And, and let me tell you, like, we took it, you know, we obviously took it very seriously. So we had to sequester her in the room. And it was me and, and the kids. For two weeks. Mm -hmm. I, Siri got a false positive during this whole thing. And for 24 hours until it came back and they had reversed it, it went to a lab, it was a whole thing. There was a period where I was like, oh my gosh. Oh God. She's sequestered in a room and I have all four kids. Like, wow. how how do I do this? You, right. Wow. And then you're immediately a close contact. Yes. Just by vis right. your wife. Sure. Yes. So technically, you're not supposed to be, like, who, I was on the phone with the doctor, who's going to raise my children? <laughs> <laughs> you want to come over? Let's bring some wolves over. How you did that? Yeah. Uh, Grace of God. Yeah. Mr. Mom, Michael Keaton. Well, Lindsay was parenting by phone, too. Yeah. Like, she was able to FaceTime and tell the kids to not do stuff. <laughs> so. No, the kids have adapted. Well, how about yours? Um, same. Like, it's just so funny now how they look back at pictures and wonder why we didn't have a mask on yeah. before. Mm -hmm. And we still worry about our kids. They're yeah. not vaccinated. They're little, and they're running around. But to see them in school with the plexiglass and the wow. take, doing the tasks, and they did it every day. They were in the park with masks on. I was shocked. Hope was too little to wear a mask, which kind of mm. made me feel good because I didn't want to have her all yeah. strapped up. But Haley got so used to it. And now we leave and she's like, Mom, do you have your phone? Do you have a mask? Right. That's what they <laughs> say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's incredible how, how they, they roll with it. They get used to the mask. The day the CDC said, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear the mask yeah. outdoors. I picked up Vail at the bus stop with no mask. She comes down the bus stop with her mask and she's like, Mom, where's your mask? Yeah. Put it on. She was like, yeah. she's got a drive at the CDC waiting for <laughs> There you go. You know, but it's just like, they just, they roll with it. They mm -hmm. adapt to yeah. it. I felt guilty almost in a way for all of you guys in that I just had Nick at home. You know, yeah. at the time was 18 and... Yeah, he was he he was loving it because he'd take his laptop and I said, "Where are you going?" He goes, "I'm changing class." And he was going from room to room. Oh, that's what every he did. Every, every, what, he, what he did, yeah. but it was great. I was like, this is, after I finished the show, <laughs> I'm just I would call Craig. I'm I'm out on the lake. I'm sitting by a pool. living his best life. I was, yeah. It was. Well, did Nick adapt to the oh, yeah. mask and the rest of well, it? Well, what was interesting is for especially for kids who have you know some special needs. In a way, this was somewhat helpful because a lot of these kids are not. Ex overly social oh, uh, and, oh, and so yeah. they could be social over zoom over their computer and and I was you know I, I had to take him with me on a on a trip and he was on in school on the car in the car <laughs> and I'm listening to him how engaged he was wow. with cool. his teacher with his classmates right. and and he he really he, drives, he so loved right. it. He, he ended up with an A average for the year. Did he wow. really? Yeah. Oh, good yeah. for him. I am um, we you know we're moving and uh, day before yesterday we were going through some papers and at the beginning of the pandemic we had to it was suggested that you have kids write letters mm. and to you know sort of cope with how they're feeling and uh, Dell wrote a letter um, and he said you know, I forget who it was too but he said dear blah blah blah. Please make the pandemic go away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please have people stop dying. Please mm -hmm. have people stop getting sick. Mm -hmm. And we were moving, and Lindsay and I read the letter because we hadn't seen it since yeah. then. And just you know, yeah. pud puddles because you, oh. you know, you we've started to forget just a right. year ago, like yeah. how. Yeah. How scary it was for kids, especially. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, I think that you know NBC did that nightly news for kids. Yes, that Lester did. And it was really sort of born out of the idea that the information is so hard for kids to, to, process. to process that they would put give a show for them coming from MC. Yes. And Jackson, you know, was a correspondent for, My favorite for, for the year. By the way. That's cool. And that was really, I think, was really cool. And he had a project where he wrote, had to write a letter. And he wrote a letter to President Biden, and Biden wrote him back. That's what? right. Wow. What was the letter he wrote? The letter was about, and we, we, he wrote it, and yeah. then we sent it. He put it in mailbox, and then 
President Biden wrote him back That's after funny. being elected, and uh, Jackson had written about you know requesting some some help with racial injustice and oh with Lord. with mask wearing for the pandemic and. It was really incredible. So in our house, we had this letter that Jackson wrote and the response from oh, the president. Oh, that's amazing. Jackson spoke at commencement, you know. Wait, what? Yeah, he, well, he graduated and, and he, he spoke. He spoke, yeah. He was a speaker. What did he say? What did he say? He just talked about thanking the administrators. I mean, one of the things during school Zoom that stuck out for me was a lot of our teachers, they have kids our kids' yeah. age. Yep. And as hard as we found it, I kept saying to Siri, I'm like, look, we have to just put this in check. Think about yeah. this teacher. Yes. It, she's got this situation in her home and she's Got teaching it. all. The, so let's, you know, I, yeah. shout out to the not only first responders, but to, sure. to the teachers. Who are first responders? Um, he basically was thanking the administrators for making a year even possible. The Jackson he mature. needs an agent. Yeah, yeah Jackson's yeah, so mature. Yeah. No, it's, you know. Sign him. Sign him up. Yeah. I think we got lucky that the pandemic, by and large, the you know kids in this country did pretty well, or globally yeah. actually did pretty yeah. well. We think oh. about how this. Oh. Had this COVID-19 strain been really rough on children, this really yeah. would have been a lot Different worse. Story, yeah. But emotionally, I think. You yeah. know, Edit that out, Jen. That's too... Uh, yeah, a lot of them are struggling, yeah. you know, but you know, they're hopefully coming back. Yeah, they're doing good, though. Yeah. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Olga is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. New meaning to the expression, lies and shine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I've got one that just came to mind. Tell us. Hmm. When we went down a few months ago to uh, North Charleston to profile uh, this principal, who during the pandemic decided that he was going to uh, pick up a second job? At that was Walmart. amazing. That story, by the yeah. way. Oh, I love that guy. Um, that guy yeah. was incredible. Well, he was he's doc, you know Mr. Darby, and was one of these guys. Could not have been more unassuming, and was just he was like, "Oh shucks, why are you guys here? I, you know, I just I took this job because my kids at the mm -hmm. school they just needed school supplies, and the parents, you know, a lot of them had got laid off, and the guy just mm -hmm. stepped up, and even when we went to talk to him, like he was just. So surprised that we were there. Uh -huh. Like it was just so. It's like this is what I do. This is what we do. Yeah. We take care of each other. Um, that was probably a highlight. And I think it was probably more of a highlight because we had spent so many months covering death and despair. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. Your your gym. I mean, the time that I felt like the other day when you were hanging out with the gymnast, I was like, oh, I, I oh, did, we're back, baby. I did love that. I mean, that did make me feel like yeah. we were back a hundred percent because. You know, I mean, I felt it. But probably overall, like if I were thinking back, there was one guy who was a patient and um, he decided that he was going to write a letter to every single person who helped him. Oh, in this oh that was good too. And he read it and we surprised him by having all, all the people, people there. pop on. But I think because once you once you get out, you think I dodged a bullet and you go home. Think mm -hmm. about any time you've been in the hospital for something. Yeah. I mean, how many times do you revisit and mm -hmm. you say thank you? But yeah. to be able to do it face to face and to watch a lot of these doctors and nurses were crying because they, you know, they they needed that out of boy, that out of girl. And I remember thinking a thank you, yeah. a little thing like a thank you meant a lot, as you know, because that's what you do. Well, <laughs> look, I, I, I got to go to uh, one of the food banks uh, oh, yeah. in Connecticut. You know, and it, it, a, it, it reminded you that how close people are living to the edge because there were a lot of nice cars driving up, you know, but people, you know, when it comes down to it, needed 
help but if it wasn't for those volunteers who run these food banks uh, a lot of folks would have gone hungry and seeing people just it was the dead of winter it was freezing and cold and kids people were out kids in the yeah, car and these guys these folks who were helped I mean they had an assembly line going getting <laughs> food into people's cars uh, and that was kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. it, it restores your faith in humanity. Mm -hmm. SG, what do you I mean, it's sad, but I can't get out of my mind the doctor who was a frontline worker and an emergency mm -hmm. room physician and had the whole mm -hmm. world. I, you know, she was she had everything in front of her and she took her own life, mm -hmm. you know, because the stress of, mm. of the pandemic. And it's a sad story, but it's also a story that really inspires because her sister and her brother-in-law have picked up her story and they are doing incredible work mm -hmm. to focus attention on the mental health of frontline workers. And that needs to be said, mm -hmm. that work needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And so they mm -hmm. have t taken this painful episode and it has galvanized them mm -hmm. and they are really making a difference. And I think, you know, we look at it, okay, the pandemic, let's hope, is in mm -hmm. our past in this country, mostly, we've got to remember our frontline yes. workers and some of those pains and some of those memories are going to be with them a long time. So right. we need to remember them. And, and that, for me, that story mm -hmm. and that, that, that cause has stuck, yeah, with stuck with me. Carson, you spent a lot of time over the past year highlighting, I mean, you know. Mental health. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think mental health took a, a um, you know, a, became a prominent part of the discussion of society in the last year during the pandemic, which was a good thing because nobody's talking about it. And I was able to do that through my own situation. Mm -hmm. But I think going back to what Savannah was saying also, for me back March, we were having a baby. And part of my anxiety in general, my anxiety disorder, is that I can't control my nervous system. I just, I run hot. Like my adrenal system kind of is like a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. And so I spend every day of my life trying to check and balance how I'm gonna drive that Ferrari, you know? And mm -hmm. sometimes it's easier to control than others. At the height of the pandemic and then expecting to have a baby, my nerves were just mm -hmm. exacerbated, mm -hmm. as were so many millions of people um, going through similar situations. So, you know, seeing seeing the nurses in the hospital, you know, dropping my wife off alone, pregnant, mm -hmm. with masks on, and we were so scared, we didn't know what was what, what you could touch. This was new in the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. And then meeting the nurses when Goldie was born and realizing that these people, I want to go and retreat and hide in my home because I'm so nervous because I have this mental health situation. I want to hide like a little boy. Yet there are people in society who, like firefighters, don't run away from the fire. They run yeah, into it. To it. And we were, we were, um, you know, sort of, we got a chance to re-meet these incredible heroic yeah. folks, you know, in the, in the health sector mm -hmm. who went in and saved people's lives and had to act like their fathers or their brothers or their sisters and hold their hands. Mm -hmm. yeah. They had to do much, so much work behind closed doors. I yeah. think even today, we don't realize what the nurses and doctors yeah. really did. Because yeah. right. no one was allowed in the hospital. Right. I think by having a baby through that process, I had that window into Good the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And it was just remarkable. Celebration. Oh, yes. yes. Celebration. The Roaring Twenties, yes. baby. Yes. Your mom is bad. Yes. Is yes. Yeah. Tita. Yes. You know, every, yeah. Your in-laws and yeah, your, my you parents. Saw your folks. You know, and God. And by the way, God bless you for yeah. shining a light on, on alcoholism. Yeah. And uh, with your dad, with the book. Yeah. It's just. It, I mean, I think everybody's coming out and just feeling good. Like, we, look, we've come through something, and yeah. we're still going through it. But yeah. by God, you know, thanks, thanks to a whole lot of people we're able to live like America. Yeah, I mean, talk about appreciating things you never even thought twice about mm. in your life. Right. Like walk into the store with your kid without a mask yep. on, or going to the beach, or getting right. in the car, getting on a plane. Yep. Like stuff going, going to the grocery, grocery store. store. Like this, right. a with your having a meal out. out. Yeah. Meal out. yeah. Being able to close talk, yeah, yeah. hug, you know, and hug. Like <laughs> Needing <laughs> breath mints again. Yes, yes. yes. There you go. I, I did stock in Altoids. They got, it's got to I mean, go up. I, I, I did a, 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 you know, we do these things before the show where we talk to our different yeah. stations, and I knew. Hoda and I were going to be doing something. I actually used mouthwash. For oh, thank yes. God. Oh, thank Hoda God. went, wow, you, you, you smell minty fresh. Minty fresh. Uh, kind of makes you wonder what he'd been doing for the food. <laughs> yeah, no, well, right. you know. We all let ourselves go. Yes. Yeah. Just a bit. But we're back, baby. Yeah, Woo! We're back. Cheers to being back. Cheers. 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 I've got nothing left. And to the Once discovery again, of the Aperol Spritz. I drank oh. the most. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of asking, man, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie.
better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today, with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. Oh, How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do a weather <laughs> out. OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Here's a fun one, you know, especially as we get into some warmer weather this weekend, the ice cream truck. There's a hot debate on Twitter over ice cream. Someone posted a photo of these summer staples with the question, what are you ordering at the ice cream truck? Um, and of course, because it's Twitter, it set off a huge debate. There's been more than 45,000 people who wow. have weighed in so far. So which of those would you order? We order it every Thursday. Oh, we so. do, I do a chocolate dip vanilla cone. Ooh. Yep, no, but of those. That, of no, those are chocolate dip vanilla no, cone. No, that's right? a king cone or a, or a drumstick. Oh. You oh. know, I, I use the ones do, that come in a package. Right. Not, I used to be obsessed with drumsticks, and then I have twins who are allergic to nuts. Oh. So that's why I've moved on. What, what about, about you guys? King cone's my favorite. The king cone? King cone. If they don't have that, the drumstick, and then the choco taco. When I was a little boy, I used to go with the, the push up pop. Oh, yeah. Push -up. Push -up. yeah. Yeah, and you couldn't finish it before it started to smell. like the, the sweeter ones. Yeah, when I was a little boy. It's now, nostalgic. Now, now what do you do? Now that I'm a grown man. Ice cream sandwich? Um, no, actually. <laughs> I'll what? give you another guess. Let's bring um, the screen the, back the up. Cookie, the cookie nope, one. Wait, nope. What would Craig... You people don't okay. know. All right, let me see again. Agree. What do you think? Firecracker. No. <laughs> How'd you know? You get the firecracker. The firecracker. How did you know that? It does know that. That's yeah. like as boring as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Man can't even pick the right ice cream. <laughs> uh, there's no I way, owe man. you. I owe you for calling me out from my messy dressing room from yesterday. Oh, that is so true. I'm going right. to call your ice Close cream all selection I boring. Always, I only speak truth. <laughs> all right. Come, what did you say yesterday? I'm a traffic of truth. What are you? I, I said downstairs <laughs> to you in jest that I traffic in truth. That's right. He's like, you know I only traffic in truth. And I didn't use that Who voice. Who that? And I was it's talking. It's your voice. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. 
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Dr. Maya Warren is a scientist. I was like, I got to do something that literally makes my heart flutter, makes my eyes light up. But maybe not the kind you think. I study the microstructure, sensorial, and behavioral properties of frozen aerated dessert. Basically, to sum it all up, I know a crazy amount about ice cream and all of its close cousins. So what do you do with all this knowledge you have of, of ice cream? <laughs> I make a lot of ice cream formulas. I troubleshoot. I try to figure out you know, how to make the products better. Ice cream for me is like a blank canvas. Like most scientists, she collects data. Mm. Mm -mm. She performs experiments. I love Asian food, and so I was like, oh, peanut butter ice cream with like a sriracha swirl. Didn't really work. Something just shouldn't go in ice cream. What is your favorite wild flavor, and what's your favorite traditional flavor? So my favorite wild flavor is a beet ice cream with um, a honey drizzle, goat cheese, some pistachios, and sea salt, and cracked black pepper. My traditional love is I'm a cookies and cream lover. Ice cream companies hire Maya for her palate and her penchant for elevating flavors. And today, I get to try it out. Today we're making your absolute favorite. So we are making coffee ice cream the no-churn way. In the bowl, we have heavy whipping cream, cocoa powder, and your instant coffee. And all we're gonna do is whip that until we get really nice stiff peaks. It's like two to three minutes. So I, I've got my coffee whipped cream. And are we gonna add it to our other bowl? Yes. In this bowl, we have our sweetened condensed milk, and then we have some vanilla extract. We have some sea salt as well. And then we have evaporated milk. What we're going to do is we're going to take spatula fulls of our whipped coffee, and gently we're gonna fold it into the sweetened condensed milk mixture. And now we're creating our coffee ice cream base. You know what I'm excited about to try? Because when I was pregnant with Oliver, my, my littlest, I wanted coffee ice cream so bad that I wasn't drinking any kind of caffeine. But you can make this with like a decaf instant coffee, right? Of course, yes, you can, the sky's the limit. I learned that even toppings have scientific names. Any of like the nuts or the chocolate chips or sprinkles, those are called particulates. And then if you're going to have anything like a caramel sauce or fudge or strawberry or anything like that, that's gonna be called a variegate. Keep layering until you have it all in your container for storage. And then you're going to put it, put it in your freezer for about five hours, and then you can enjoy. Finally, it was time to put the no-churn ice cream to the test. Oh my goodness. It's ice cream. This is wild. And guess what? You made it yourself. So that makes it even that much more special. Well, I couldn't agree more. This has put a smile on my face. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. And may all ice cream lovers continue to unite. Cheers to that. <laughs> yes, cheers. Ooh, okay, let me try. Jenny's is a community of people devoted to making the best ice creams the world has ever known. What a beautiful, happy store. And you walk in and you can't help but smile. I think of entrepreneurship as building your own world, and this is our world. It's this um, beautiful place of flavor and optimism and forward thinking and all of these wonderful values that we all share. Founded in 2002, Jenny's Splendid Ice Creams has grown a solid fan base and topped over $50 million in sales last year alone. But for founder Jenny Britton Bauer, it's about much more than profits. So tell me how this all started. I was studying art history and fine arts at Ohio State, and I was working at a pastry shop, and I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do with my life, and then I found ice cream. Jenny left school and poured herself into library books, learning how to make ice cream. So what do you love so much about ice cream? First of all, it melts in this beautiful, perfect way, and as it melts, it blooms and releases flavor. It's almost magical. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's solid and it's liquid, it's frozen, but it's not all the way frozen. And it is a moment in your day that you'll be present with. In 1996, Jenny opened her first shop, Scream, at a local farmer's market in Columbus, Ohio. I learned about seasonality from farmers and how to work together with people. 
I learned about cheeses and herbs and spices and chocolates and baked goods and wines and just anything you can imagine under that roof. And I made ice cream out of all of it. But the eve changing artisanal flavors weren't an easy sell. And Jenny had to close up shop. I thought I was walking away from ice cream. It, it, it had been a difficult four years and I had burned out in a big way. This is my kind of kitchen, a test kitchen in ice cream. It took two more years and a bank loan for Jenny to relaunch her business, this time with her signature flavors and putting her name behind the brand. And that recipe worked. Today, Jenny has 45 scoop shops around the country. When was the moment, or did it not come yet, where you said to yourself, I made it, okay, uh -huh. I can exhale? You know what? It's never happened, and I, I just, I've never had that moment of like, oh, phew, right. now it's okay. You've talked so much about your path, and it seems like resilience is really what you're built on. Yeah. I think a lot about this idea of blazing your own path. You're gonna fall, it's, it's gonna be hard, and every time you make that sort of stumble or something doesn't work, you now have information that everybody else doesn't have, something that's unique in the world. You have to keep going. Jenny has kept going with over 200 employees while still using farm-to-table ingredients. So I think that if you focus on making people happy, and I mean like one person at a time, I think that you know everything else kind of falls into place. One scoop at a time. One scoop at a time. In Search for Kindness takes us all across the country, and today we have landed at an ice cream shop in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, for five years, Howdy Homemade has been employing individuals with special needs. So when the shop fell on hard times during the pandemic, the community rallied around it. Check it out. There are a few things about Howdy Homemade that make it extra sweet. Hey. The Dallas, Texas shop is known for its original flavors and friendly service. All of the men and women taking orders and scooping the ice cream are individuals with special needs and disabilities. <laughs> He's funny. Tom Landis was inspired to open the shop in 2015 after meeting one extraordinary young man. How many pints? It was a real busy night and I met Coleman and he just immediately jumped in and, and helped serve. Uh, food and uh, was super friendly and I called his mom up the next day and said hey you know I want, I want to hire this guy he has so much potential written all over him and leadership I was blessed that I was going to get this opportunity to not only be a, a employee for Tom but to also be an asset to where how he's going to blossom he has matured so much. He is so responsible now to know what time he needs to get ready so that we're ready to get him to work on time. If I'm behind the counter and someone comes in, they have a visual look of disappointment on their face. They want to see Coleman. They want to see my crew there doing what they do. Frankly, they do it better than me. Like many restaurants across the country, Howdy Homemade closed temporarily at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic to ensure the safety of their employees. Have a blessed day. One of my greatest concerns was what Coleman was gonna do with his time. He missed being at the shop. He missed the other employees. He missed the interaction with people. Thank you. Welcome, ma'am. But even after the shop opened again after two months, the slower customer traffic and fewer catering orders put it in danger of closing for good. I think it got to the point where it took absolutely a very clear message of me realizing, you know what, I can't do it. I honestly think that's when God said, what'd you say? He, he said, oh, you, you can't do it? Yep, no, you can't. But you know what? I'm going to surround you with a village of people. That village included Jaxie Alt, a friend who championed the shop from the beginning. My name is Poland Zone. She I'm organized a GoFundMe campaign, which so far has raised more than $100,000 and kept Howdy Homemade running. We want to face off on the bottom of our hearts. It's humbling. We have had multiple times where you just stop and you tear up because it's no longer our restaurant. It's, it's truly the city of Dallas's restaurant. The donations also allowed Tom to invest in an ice cream truck. Now Howdy Homemade is on the move, serving more areas and creating new jobs. These kids are an important part of our community and that they really are helping and are a vital part of really all of our existence.
what I hope is next for how to go made is to keep franchising and go into companies and say, this is who we are. People are not supporting Howdy Homemade because of Tom Landis. They're supporting it because of Coleman and the others. And I think as more businesses start to realize that, the world will change. And look who is with us, owner Tom Landis and the man who inspired it all, Coleman Jones. Hi guys, how are you? Well, good, thank you. Oh, well, we love your story, and we love the fact that this ice cream store is really the epitome of all that is good in this country. Tom, tell me a little bit how Coleman inspired you to start it. Uh, you know what? We wanted to find people as friendly as Hoda, as wise as Yoda, and as bubbly as a can of Dr. Pepper soda. And that's Coleman. <laughs> He's the embodiment of, of everything. Oh. And you know what, though? All kidding aside, there's 240,000 adults with special needs in North Texas alone. 3.1 million adults in all of Texas that uh, want a job. They want a shot. Yeah. They want a chance mm -hmm. to show everyone that they've got a special talent. And uh, that's what Howdy Homemade is. And that's what Coleman is. Well, oh. Coleman, we want to we want to speak with you, Coleman, in just a second. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Yes. And we may even have a little surprise in store for you guys. So we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. Back after this. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Tonight, we're on the scene as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this, or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know. The biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. We are back with the story of Tom Landis and Coleman Jones of Howdy Homemade Ice Cream Shop in Dallas, Texas. Coleman, Coleman, what, what is your favorite part about working there? Tell us about that. Um, my favorite part about working with Howdy is I get to work with um, really fun in employees, and I also get to work with uh, cool customers. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It seems like a place that's spreading so much joy. Tom, when you guys hit on hard times during the pandemic and your community rallied around you, what did that feel like? Uh, you, you know what? I think part of Howdy was... This idea of, of taking faith on a joyride in source, search of hope, and, and the special needs community has a, a foundation and a, and, a, and a well of hope that the, quote, neurotypical community doesn't have. And in fact, when, when we did COVID hit, I, I started to give up. Uh, but it was guys like Coleman, it was guys like Kaylin, it was guys like my employees that have been around for five years, and, and then their families and, and the special needs community that said, man, you, you, you don't get it. We get it. We're, we're going to make this thing happen. And 
Uh, I, I think um, uh, we've just learned so much, and, and it's just from here on out, it's just a, a ride of thanks. Well, we got some of your biggest cheerleaders. We got a virtual fan wall. We don't do this for everybody, <laughs> no, we but y'all are so special. There's your virtual fan wall of support, and one of them is a guest uh, that's gonna got a little surprise for you. Marcus Limones is a businessman. He's the host of The Profit on CNBC. <laughs> he heard about Good your morning, incredible guys. story. He wanted to say hi. Marcus, what do you think? I think it's amazing, Coleman. It is great to meet you. I know that you got dressed up really nicely this morning. You look super professional. How are you feeling? I'm good, thank you. M Marcus, I think you have a little news you want to share. I do. You know, I have spent my whole career, my whole life, really helping businesses get to the next level. And it's clear to me that you guys are prepared to get to that next level. So I would like to give you a $50,000 grant specifically used to hire more people to grow what you're trying to do in the Dallas community. I think all of us through this entire pandemic are blown away by the leadership that you're showing and, and quite frankly, the role models that the two of you are for the rest of us. So we want to provide this grant to you to help you get your business to the next level. Uh, Coleman, we what? saw that smile. What do you think? Unbelievable. <laughs> it really is. Tom, is this going to help? You know, you know what, Marcus, sir, we're a huge fan of, of yours. <laughs> and uh, I can't tell you how many times people said, Tom, you got to watch this guy. You got to watch this guy. You got to learn from him. And uh, you know what? I can't, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank the city of Dallas. We had more than 1,300 people uh, 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 support us and, and, and help us. Would you be open to me coming down there and spending a day with you guys? Now, you understand if I come there and you've watched the show, we're going to look at the people, we're going to look at the process, and we're definitely going to taste the product. And maybe you'll let me work for you for a couple of, couple of hours in the afternoon. Are you open to that? Yes, sir. All right, oh. we got a deal. We got a deal. Coleman, Tom, <laughs> we want to thank you guys for being here. We wish you the best of luck. All right, nothing, nothing like ice cream in the summertime. Oh, that's so true. And chef and food personality, Artie Sakara has an easy recipe with an added ingredient. Artie! Artie, how are you? Oh, how are you? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Oh Jenna, God. you said my name correctly. I, I said it. Of By the way, I did. RT, we were practicing. Yes, and so, you, this yeah. new kitchen behind you looks gorgeous. Killer. Awesome. It's a beauty. Are you so happy to have moved? Thank you. I know. This is so. Yes, yeah, so happy. I mean, we moved from LA to Raleigh in February. Um, and one of the reasons we moved is because, look, this is my kitchen. This is my kitchen. This is still my kitchen. Oh my God. I just have so much room that we never had in LA. And we have family here. And so my kids are growing up with their cousins. Um, and so we designed this kitchen, especially to do things like this, so that I could bring you into my home, even though I'm so far away from you. Oh, we're so well, we're happy. happy to see you. So you grew up in Dubai and your ice cream sandwiches have a special ingredient. What is that? Yes. So there's a couple of special ingredients. In Dubai, um, the people there were nomads. They were Bedouins. And so when they welcomed you into their big black tents, they would give you a strong cup of coffee, really thick, that had been brewed with cardamom. So that's actually going into my dry ingredients for my cookies. Mm. Um, and they would also give you a date, these gorgeous dates. And so mm. these are actually California dates. So it's sort of a two in one for me. This is Dubai and California all wrapped up. Mm. And the whole thing that I'm trying to do is take unfamiliar flavors and foods and put them into familiar so we all sort of feel connected. Um, and so I took the most American thing I could think of, the thing that when you smell, you're like, I'm home, which is a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> and I'm putting that sort of Arab hospitality element into it. So yeah. I'm going to get going if that's okay. okay get you. going, please, Artie. This looks delicious. <laughs> okay, so I've got butter and two kinds of sugar in my stand mixer here. I've got white sugar, and I'm using dark brown sugar because that's going to give it that good flavor and also make it chewy, right? So I cream that together. I'm going to add two eggs and vanilla. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just want to get that nice and mixed together. Then for the dry ingredients, I've got flour, 
baking soda and salt, and then of course like gorgeous cardamom. And the cardamom, if you don't have it, you can use cinnamon, it's not a big deal. But cardamom gives it this sort of piney, flowery sort of flavor that really brings out, I think, like the deepness and the darkness of the chocolate. And it definitely kind of makes you feel like, okay, we're not here anymore, we're somewhere else, right? It's one of those power spices. And I think it's even called the queen of spices. So in it goes. And I add the flour in two batches. So you basically so you don't have a mess all over the floor, which I forgot to do yesterday. So I made a big mess, <laughs> the first big mess in my new kitchen. So you're gonna stir that together until it comes together. And then you're gonna have cookie dough, yeah. right? After that, I've got a cup of chocolate chips and I've got half a cup of those chopped California dates that I love so much. So those go in. Nice and sticky. And what happens is the dates kind of melt into the cookies. And so you get these little pools of molasses almost in the middle of each cookie, which is oh, so good. And then you're going to stir this together. You're going to need some elbow grease because you want to make sure that the chocolate chips and the dates are evenly distributed. I mean, you don't want anyone getting that one cookie that doesn't have anything in it. That exactly. is always so sad <laughs> when that happens. So once that's done, yeah, you bake them up. Um, you're going to use an ice cream scoop. All right. Um, any any real lover of ice cream has to have one of these around, so, right? So, so I'm going to use that, and then I'm going to pull these beautiful the little balls of cookie dough. We don't, 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 don't want to rush it, but um, we're, for some reason we're, we only have like 30 seconds. So after you bake them, do you just scoop some ice cream in between? Yeah, oh, okay. Let me just show you what happens at the end. Yeah. You bake them. <laughs> Yummy. Yeah. Okay. And Man, then yeah. all you do is you take your cookie. Oh, yeah. You put your ice cream on it. Okay, that part is easy. Yeah. But the real magic is that then you sprinkle pistachio around oh, the Artie. edge, and that is how you finish Artie, we that. We love you. Artie. Thank you so much for that recipe. Please go to today.com. <laughs> oh, thank you, Artie. Thank you, Artie. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Champagne popsicles, Ooh. tequila soaked watermelon, oh. cherry beer slushies. Cherry beer slushies. Oh. Have we gotten your attention yet? Yeah, it is time to chill out. We're going to beat the heat with some frozen adult beverages from Thumbtacks lifestyle expert, Allison Letary. Hi. Hi okay, let's have some fun. Yes. We Girl, wanna... <laughs> we already love this segment. You haven't done anything yet. Perfect. Okay. Thumbtack bartenders have told me their favorite frozen cocktails for the summer. And I know you ladies love your rose, right? We do. Yes. So and what you're are perfect. This is easy. This is it. So let's start with frozen rosé or frosé okay. two ways. Yes. So first we're actually going to make lemon simple syrup oh, to give it a really fun syrup. flavor. Okay. Coda, I'll you're on it. That. Sugar, so do you have lemon to do juice, that? lemon zest, and then you'll whisk it and until the what? sugar completely dissolves. And then what? Strain it and set it aside. And now let's get on to the good stuff, the rosé. Right. Okay, so Jenna, you'll pour the you whole bottle wasteful. in. 
No, it's, we're freezing oh, it. This we're not better. wasting a drop. Perfect. Okay. Okay, and I want you to get a really dark rosé, like a Pinot Noir or a Malbec. Good. Yeah. So can you pour Slash the whole them, bottle? The whole bottle, and then we'll place it in the freezer. That's it. Three hours later, take it out, and then you'll scrape these beautiful pink oh. crystals. You add the simple syrup to give it the flavor. Sweet. Yeah. Good. And so you it's... really have to add the simple syrup? Or... It's totally to taste, so whatever okay. sweetness you like. And these are gorgeous, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so you enjoy those, because mm. I want to show you a mm. twist. It's good with the, Yum. Yeah, with the lemon. Rosé popsicles. Oh. So for this, you take that same rosé and lemon simple syrup. Mm -hmm. You pour it into popsicle molds. Here we have strawberries in the bottom. How or if you want that? something even easier, champagne. You yes. just pour champagne straight into popsicle yes. molds. Here we have Ooh. peaches, strawberries, mm. whatever fruit you have around. Ooh, and you can eat mm. them. Drink mm -hmm. any. Perfect. Okay. Right. Okay. So what is your favorite summer cocktail? Margarita. Tequila straight. Margarita. Okay. I'm with Jenna. <laughs> Margarita too. So for this, we're going to make watermelon margarita on a stick. Okay. So first, we make our margarita mix. We've already got tequila in here, so we'll okay. add lime juice and triple sec. Okay. And then you just place these these watermelon slices. They soak in. it in. Soak it. Twenty minutes. Soak and it. Then, okay, and then here they you are. take them out. Quit it. And then we cut twenty second, twenty minutes, and then uh -huh. we've put a popsicle stick in here. You're already eating them. I love it. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. what you'll do we is forget the salt on the rim. We're going sugar. Mm -hmm. So you dip the them in limb. sugar. You place yeah. them on the tray. Yeah. It's down there. Don't you worry. <laughs> freeze it. It's in yes, there. Yes, it's there. Uh, two hours later, they're ready to serve. It's literally that you easy. You freeze it? Is that what you said? Freeze it for two hours. Okay. And then ready to serve. So okay. then they're probably a little... Yeah, that looks great. Okay. Frozen. <laughs> so this next one might surprise you, actually. Uh -huh. Oh, frozen. Thumbtack bartenders <laughs> oh, yeah. are mm -hmm. telling me beer is mm -hmm. the hottest ingredient in frozen cocktails this summer. Mm -hmm. So let's make a cherry beer slushy. So for this one, you've got two bottles of a delicious beer. How do I pour it with you? Pour it in. Then you add cherry liqueur, your grenadine. Okay. Perfect. Cool. And then freeze this for two hours. But the right. key is, so, yeah. you have to go back and mix it every 30 minutes. All right. So we're it's gonna nice do and that. Fleshy. All the details of this Perfect. and our final cocktail on our website. Great job. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Today.com/food. This season has been a blockbuster for the folks at Saturday Night Live, starting with their take on the election and the Florida recount. Hey, Kathy, I've been thinking about my cabinet. Who do you think would make a better Secretary of the Interior, Nolan Ryan or The Rock? <laughs> You're thinking too hard, George. You look tense. Heck, I just can't wait till all this president junk is over with next week so I can go back to hunting and executing. Next week? You know you have to be president for four years. What? That blows! I'm gonna kill Dick Cheney! He told me it was like winning a fishing contest. You get a trophy, you take a picture, and then you're done. <laughs> <laughs> the season wraps up tomorrow night with actor Christopher Walken as the guest host, Will Ferrell is an SNL regular and plays President Bush, obviously. Duh, we really needed that on that yeah. introduction, didn't we? But, I'm the guy well. who does that, by Anyway, the way. how yeah, are just you? To, just to clear all the confusion. You yeah. know, I've seen that clip, Will, I think six times, yeah. and I still Still get a chuckle. Don't oh. you? I mean, uh, it. Yeah, I mean, we, we had some good luck this year. Yeah, yeah I yeah, mean, I was gonna say point. that the season pretty much wrote itself. Yeah. You had so much good material happening with the election and then the aftermath of the election. So it was very it fortuitous, was, wasn't it? Was it was pretty amazing. It was, I mean, it was at times, you know, shooting fish in a barrel. But, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I mean, if, if, you know, if you would have told me at the beginning of the year that, that I'd be sitting on the Today Show right before our last show, I'm playing the president, all that stuff, I, I would have said, I don't know. Well, yeah. it's, it's really raised your profile in a, in a pretty incredible way. It they, has. In we, fact, Ricky Martin's not doing the second song. I am. <laughs> just, to, just to make sure we all know that. Yeah. Have you picked out what song you're going to sing? I'm still thinking of it. Yeah, yeah, good. But when you walk around, Will, people stop yeah, you on the street and talk to you. And that didn't happen to you so much before, right. sort of pre-BB, exactly. before Bush. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, being on Saturday Night Live and being in late night television, it's a little like dog years you know it takes like seven years to equal one year of recognition right, in a right. way. uh so so you know every year i've been on the show the recognition has been a little bit more but this year was like just a, a 
complete jump. And uh, yeah, I even had a, I was in Los Angeles in Koreatown at a completely Korean restaurant, no, you know, with Korean friends and the Korean waitress came up and was like, George Bush. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I mean that, you know, you know it's far reaching. When, you when penetrated that all demographics, yeah, yeah, haven't much, you? So. Um, you, uh, you were invited to go to the White House. Yeah. And you declined. Yeah. How come? I, uh, I was working on my golf game. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you don't get in the way of that, you know, especially with the backswing. I mean, Matt knows about that. You know, you got to work on the backswing and the follow through. So. And, and you had to rearrange your sock drawer, too, I understand. Uh, pr pretty much No, that, yeah. there was a reason. You didn't want to get too close to your, yeah, your, I, your subject. Right. I kind of. Uh, it wasn't a political statement. No, you were no. Making. I just, I just uh, you know, I kind of feel like we, we you know, if I. I didn't want to, you know, we, we kind of were equal opportunity offenders on the show. In terms right, of because you made plenty of fun of Bill, of Bill Clinton. Clinton. Daryl did a great right, job of that. And, and so, I, yeah, I just feel like if, if you kind of know the, the, the subject that you're portraying, you may, you may feel a little weird in terms of what kind of comedy you want to do. So. It was funny because Daryl was disappointed since he portrayed Al Gore in the campaign and you portrayed uh, yeah. George Bush. He, he was very disappointed. He said professionally for himself that Al Gore didn't win, and you right, were, were right. you like score? I I rub it in every day. You do. I'm just like Daryl. <laughs> guess who's the prez? <laughs> <laughs> you also did a great job um, impersonating Janet Reno, and she, in, a, in an incredible yeah. display of good sportsmanship. Yes, Janet Reno herself she came on the came show. On show, and it was her idea too. And we've got some yeah. B-roll of you yeah. actually dancing, doing the right. Janet yeah. Reno, which has become a very popular dance at clubs across the country, <laughs> I understand. Uh, but... Were you surprised when she said she was willing to do this? Completely. And uh, she was such a good sport. And as you can tell by that ovation, she was like a rock star. She really With was. The, because, uh, I mean, you, you mocked her like mercilessly during mouth. the season. Now, okay. by transitive theory, since I look like, I like your dress, Janet. Janet Reno, <laughs> And Thanks, I play Janet. President Bush. Like Bush too. could actually dress as Janet Reno Janet. if he wanted to. Now that would be something just, to see. What do you do when you get sad? I just dance. Now hit it. <laughs> she was. Uh, Did you enjoy meeting her? Oh, she was. It was amazing. It was one of the highlights of my, you know, time on the show. And and she was. I had a lot. I had all my family there, and she she talked to all of us, and we had this great discussion on you know the value of comedy in terms of making fun of our political system, and and how she 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 thought that was just so important to be able to to kind of poke fun at our leaders, and, and she, she's, a, she's a hero, yeah. Now, another hero in your life is your yes. mom. You yes. all did a Mother's Day special, yes. and your mom took part. Let's take yes. a quick look. Okay. I can't believe it. It's Mother's Day. Everyone goes to a lot of trouble and expense to fly their mothers out here to New York to do a Mother's Day special. And you show up three hours late because you've been out all night drinking. I was worried sick, no phone call, no, nothing. I, I hope you had a good time. I did have a good time. What's that? <laughs> Smart mouth? <laughs> you didn't have to do much convincing to get your mom, Kay Farrell, to come on the show. No, Kay, come right on here. down or come on up yeah, real mom. quick and say a quick <laughs> hi. Who are you? It's so nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Thank too. you for coming by. Do you, do you get as big a kick out of your son as we do? Oh, certainly. Yeah? I do. And yeah. every time he imitates President Bush, do you feel so proud? I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I also laugh my head off. Oh, I think yeah. he does such a good job. Well, he's yeah. doing really well. You've just yeah. finished a couple of movies, right, Will? Uh, yes, uh, Kevin Smith movie, uh, Jay and Silent Bob strike, Strikes Back, which comes out August uh, 24th, and then uh, Zoolander with Ben Stiller that'll come out in the fall. Well, yeah. congratulations on all Thank your you. success. Tell everybody up at SNL we said hi. Looking sure forward will. to this Saturday with Christopher, Christopher Walken, Walken as the guest host. He's and pretty... Weezer, your favorite band. I love them. Yes. Weezer's yes. on? Yes. Oh, no kidding. We can maybe get you in. Really? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's talk after the okay, show. Fine. I'll give you an extra donut or something. Fine, okay. Anyway, Will and Kay, nice to see you. Nice to see you.
Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Yeah. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. 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 We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning. See the expression. Rise and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Tonight, we're on the scene as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The start of the 1970s was the heyday of the scotch swilling and cigarette smoking anchor man. As the decade progressed, women began to make their way into the onto the airwaves, much to the anger of their old school colleagues. The upcoming film Anchorman brings this battle of the sexes to the big screen and shows the conflict in all its raw emotion. Here's a scene in which San Diego's Ron Burgundy clashes with colleague Veronica Corningstone over a videotape machine in the newsroom. Mr. Burgundy, I'm a professional. And I would like to be able to do my job. Well, well, big deal. I am very professional. Mr. Burgundy, you are acting like a baby. I'm not a baby. I'm a man. I am an anchor man. You are not a man. You are a big fat joke. I'm a man who discovered the wheel and built the Eiffel Tower out of metal and brawn. That's what kind of man I am. You're just a woman with a small brain, with a brain a third the size of us. It's science. And making his big screen debut, Ron Burgundy <clears throat> was lucky enough to be cast to play himself. He joins us this morning. Ron, good morning. Hello, Katie. You know, good morning she, to you. Thank you very much. You know, all Veronica Corningstone wanted to do was use the videotape machine in the newsroom. Do you mm. think you were overreacting? Was I overreacting? Is that the question? Yes, that is the question. Um, l look, you've been in a newsroom before. Things get heated. Audiences fell in love with Will Ferrell and such hits as Anchorman and Old School and Nick Offerman continues to win accolades. God only knows why for his role as Ron Swanson on NBC's Parks and Recreation. So together there is no <laughs> doubt these two will make comedy magic. They are starring in this funny, funny new movie. Oh, it is God. called Casa, Casa de, de Mi Padre. Padre. It's in Spanish. Just take a look. Do you speak American? No, senor. No habla americano. Yo pienso que si puedes ayudarme. Hago una llamada y diez helicópteros vienen sobre ese cerro y hacen de tu rancho un pedo encendido. <laughs> And they are um, here. So they're here. They're so very uh, yeah. in body. In sp What's going on it's with the so robes? It's so relaxing here. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like it treatment. is. It's the whole place is like a spa. Talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, 
Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Tonight, we're on the scene as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sherlock Holmes, not exactly like no one's ever done it before. Well, we decided the most beloved characters in English literature. I'm not, fam I'm not literature. familiar with any other versions, <laughs> really. <laughs> this was new territory for me. I was like, we, let's do something fresh. Yeah. And I knew the kids are going to love. Yeah. <laughs> right? And here we are. Yeah. Yeah, we decided that the most famous characters in the English literature needed an American revamp <laughs> by Will and I, but we still kept it English. We still kept it English. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was, I think it was just our, I think it was time for our turn at Holmes and Watson. Look, the truth is, these movies, uh, the stories are so perennial and favorite, the uh, favorite. What am I trying to say? It's, this is our first interview together, Harry. I don't have my sound bites together yet. Give me a second. It's all about Brexit. <clears throat> it's all about Brexit. Yeah, it's an because allegory. Because of Brexit, we thought, let's do Holmes and Watson. Because it's the pulling apart yes. and, the and the coming back, back together, together again. Yeah, right. of course. You know, what I was going to say was Sherlock Holmes is such a beloved s s series of stories because, I mean, look at like CSI, mm -hmm. uh, all these kind of detective shows or behind the scenes or forensic analysis shows, that's all Sherlock Holmes. And people, there's something about when you present, uh, like it's almost like when you lose your glasses or something, which I'm sure you do once a day, at least, Harry, right? Yeah. You go, <clears throat> you just, you are not satisfied until you find those glasses. And that's right. And Will's got them. <laughs> you want to see something really cool? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's amazing. Right? <laughs> Middle-aged cool guy. <laughs> All right. When I walk into a restaurant, people are like, right this way, Mr. Farrell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't have to pull your phone out no. and nope. light you up don't. the whole place. They don't these... even have to turn the lights on at the restaurant. Have... You can find yeah. your way there. If there's ever a blackout, power outage, I'm ready to go. The apocalypse. Even though... These are really hard to turn on and off. Yeah. They hurt yeah. your fingers. Wow. Speaking of glasses. Uh, I'm going to stop trying to make actual points about the movie and just, <laughs> just go with the convo, I think. <clears throat> Several points. I thought being so true to the text was very important. The yeah. Conan Doyle text. Because there's cocaine use, <laughs> morphine yeah. use. Right. Which, all of which were legal. When well, those things in a were way, was, uh, this stuff yeah. is very ripe for comedy because yeah. the Victorian area had all kinds of weird hang-ups and misconstrued ideas about science and health and spiritualism. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, they believed you could feel someone's skull and tell like what their personality was. <laughs> like, it's crazy. So yeah, we we took license with all of that. Yeah, the English accents. I thought I'm I'm sure you probably went to. England and found the very best, the best of the best accent teachers. Yes, yes. and they would not work with us. <laughs> they so were busy. We just went for it on our they own. They were busy. We just went for it. They were busy. Right. Um, <clears throat> I think it's 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 so funny how so many British actors do American accents, mm -hmm. and it's no big deal. Right. And we did British accents. Yeah. And we, stop the press. Stop the presses. <laughs> we wanted to have a parade every day. Uh, 
But no, yeah. we, uh, yeah, we were in there, you know, swinging away. Yes. Yes. In, no question. Yes. <laughs> yes. I thought I heard a little barologist in the English. A barologist. That's just a bad old reference. We can. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Sketch that could never get on television. Yes, yes. right. Okay. Um, So when you're working together, who breaks up more on set? Gosh, I I don't know if there's a, uh, I don't know if there's any scientific analysis on that. I'd say it's a 50-50 split. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. first first man tickled. But it's it's not, it's not on the, um, it's not on the big joke moments. It's not the moments where (laughs) the rest of the crew may be laughing or. (laughs) I remember a specific thing in Step Brothers where it was, was, again, was not some big laugh line that I I had. It was was like uh, Will had cut himself on the bunk beds and. And I was like, what are we going to do? And he, he, go, he just went real seriously, it's a waiting game. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I just lost it. I got very good at like not laughing because, you know, like Judd Apatow would have the great, greatest advice when we're doing Talladega. He's like, well, if you laugh, you ruin the take. So you want to ruin the take? He's like, oh, right. We pride ourselves on hanging in there as yeah. long as we can. But there was a moment in this film where we... we there's a moment in the film where the where the first selfie is taken. Uh, <laughs> Holmes and Watson create the first selfie, and through a set of circumstances, trying to get a better angle, we we happen to knock out the queen. We're taking the photo with the queen, Queen Victoria, yeah. and we don't know. We think we've killed her, and we don't know what to do with the body. <laughs> and it turns into a very slapstick moment where we're trying to to stuff the to queen's stuff body this into a trunk, dummy into a trunk. And at one point, I just started punching the behind. And, and, but I was very serious. I was not trying to get a laugh. I was just thinking, what would he do in a moment of panic? Of course, punch her in the butt. <laughs> and that, That's what you do to get someone in the trunk? <laughs> and so that, that, I got John on that one. I was hyperventilating. <laughs> I thought I was going to pass out. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's a joy. It's a it's a it's a very effortful day at work with yeah. this guy every day because you gotta go for it. I mean, he follows an idea, you gotta go for it. <laughs> but it's so much joy, man. What a what a great joyful day at work these movies are to make. Yeah. I have to say, absolutely. So, do you at all feel guilty about the thousands and thousands and thousands of men who every time? Step brothers. Erectile dif- dis- Oh, is this not that part? Not that part. Not that part. You're not responsible. Okay. That. <laughs> thousands of thousands of men yeah. who spend endless so hours. Is this no. The no. Ads, the You're gonna get there. Antics? We're gonna get there. Okay, fine. We're gonna get there. Okay. Who with their sweatpants and t shirts and beer in hand, right. watching Talladega Nights and Step Brothers. Yeah. Every time it comes on cable. Every single time. Thousands of they know the lines, word by yeah. word. Verbatim. Verbatim. They yeah. know the lines better than we do. I have people sidle up to me at airports and go, "Do you like guacamole?" Like, <laughs> what? Yes, I do. Oh, the movie. Right, right. Sorry. Oh, I, had, I had a woman pull up next to me and go, "Why are you so sweaty?" <laughs> and I literally had just ridden, gone on a bike ride. I'm like, oh, I, I was on a bike ride. She's like, "No, <laughs> Step Brothers. You're supposed to say I was. You were watching Cops." <laughs> She got mad. She accosted me. Uh, it, yeah, the love is the deep love for those deep. movies. The love yep. is deep and yep. sometimes confusing to us, but we're we're so thankful to have it. Yeah. And you don't feel guilty about it? No. Are you kidding me? Wives, about, wives, what? wives shouting across through the house. Honey, come to bed. No, the good part's coming up. This is how we do it. Na 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 na. There only is a little bit of guilt when you get like a a four-year-old walk up to you and like, you're in Step Brothers. I'm like, you yeah. shouldn't be watching the yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. But there are worse things men could be watching late at night when their wives True. are trying to get them to go to bed. True. You know? Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Having a good laugh, that's that never hurt that's, anybody. Yeah. 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 Very important. Yeah. About Sherlock Holmes. Mm-hmm. Is it, It's a musical. There. That's in the, another reason why to do this movie yeah is uh, no one's done that no one's broken out nope. in song realizing that it was wrong yeah 
to jail his best friend, yeah. Watson, <laughs> right. for no reason. Yes. Basil Rathbone wish he had a musical number. But wish yeah, it's a, it's a love letter to these characters, to their relationship, mm-hmm. and it's, um, it's yeah. an, a, a, another fantastic moment. moment it's a real movie. left turn in the movie, too. <laughs> you know, you're going along, it's a period correct Victorian comedy, and then... <laughs> Shot, Big musical number. Shot at the Tower of London. The actual Tower of London. In the actual, the Tower, actual Tower of London, where people died people and were have, hung. People like, have lots. planned their vacation, but it was shut down those two days. Because <laughs> we have to sing our musical number. Yes. I think that's... Thank you, Tower of London. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Milady Queen. The Queen herself, who authorized it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you got to believe like somebody like... Benedict Cumberbatch, or but sure, what's the guy's name? Uh, Cumberbatch. Yes. Yeah. He's he'll see this musical number and just and, go and yeah, he's either going to be extremely jealous. That's my guess. Yeah. Or he's going to come after. Or us. he'll yeah. be like, "Oh, I'm good. I'm fine. My <laughs> legacy stands." <laughs> Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this, or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Welcome to today. Future's looking bright. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers. We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning to the expression lies and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. Couple things very quickly. Is there what is it? An Anchorman podcast? A, n- a next year. Next year. Really? We're recording them right now. Holy cow! Yeah. Ron Burgundy is the host. Ron Burgundy. Holy cow! Wow. I'm gonna get on that show. Yeah. Wow. He's hosting <clears throat> his own podcast. He doesn't really know what a podcast is. <laughs> he, he talks about that a lot. <laughs> He's fearful of it. He thinks it, at first he thought it was just played on the radio. He yeah. Didn't. He's always. Well, aliens come from pods. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could yeah. be that. Pretty close. Yeah. And you, well, speaking of aliens in outer space, I thought you and Guardian and the Galaxy was. Oh, like, for me, For me, it's one of those. It's another one of those movies you watch a million times. Yeah. Yeah, no, Guardi- Guardians of the Galaxy was great. I yeah, you know, I shot it. that in London, actually. <clears throat> I shot it in London. No, the reason I mentioned it, because I've just been. Out here talking about so many different movies, then that that that's kind of a call back at this point. But yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. So did a billion other people. Yeah, yeah, lots. That movie made a whole yeah. bunch of cash. We're good. We're really good. This is really great. Just cut that part out. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in so many movies at this point. You can just name a random movie. I'm probably in it. Yeah. Yeah. So have have you forgotten what movies you were in? Uh. Does anyone ever come up to you and say, uh, you were so great in so-and-so, and and you said, "Mm." No, I I remember, I remember, because those those are important moments in your life. Whether the movie is your favorite movie or not, you still have, like, various things that happen on those movies, like you meet a new friend or... I, I I had a day at one of my kids' baseball games where I was watching the game, and a guy comes by with his son and is like, Hey, can we take a, a photo? And I said, You know what? I'm watching my my kids' game, and that's kind of my contract with my children. That when I'm doing stuff with them, I I don't do any of that stuff. I'm sure you understand. He kind of walks away, 
hour later, he comes by with his kid. And he's like, yeah, nice to meet you, Will. Ooh. <laughs> really liked you in a kindergarten cop, but uh, <laughs> wouldn't take a photo with me. So I guess we won't watch that again. You weren't in kindergarten. Like I was not in it. So burn on you. <laughs> so I got, I got thrown <laughs> kindergarten cop. So I'm not, uh, in, I'm not in that. You weren't in that? I would have liked to have seen you in that. <laughs> now I'm sounding like my mom. My mom I, Why say, don't you do that? Yeah, she's like, I saw that movie big with that Tom Hanks. Why didn't you do that? <laughs> like, oh, uh, let's right. see, Mom. They, uh, they didn't ask. Uh, Tom well, why Hanks didn't, why didn't they ask? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. What does Tom you know? Hanks have over you? <laughs> <laughs> These are the kind of conversations I Should you, you have sit with down with Tom Hanks? <laughs> Talk yeah. to that Tom Hanks. Why does he keep What's doing everything? What's the name of the studio that made that movie? I'll call them. <laughs> Please don't, Mom. Please don't. No, I'm going to call them. Guess what? I called them. They're not calling me back. You call them. <laughs> She's so funny. My, my family had nothing to do with show business. Nobody in it, my family had anything. But my mom quickly adopted a kind of like a very uh, aggressive show business, like ideas about things. I'd call her and I'd be like, Mom, you know, I'm in, uh, whatever, I'm in Guardians of the Galaxy. It just came out today. She's like, that's great. What else are you doing? <laughs> uh, you got to give me more. What's next? Like, you I don't know. give me more. Yeah, just, it's a big yeah. movie. Like, I'm just excited to tell you. I don't have another job right now. Oh, you better get going. <laughs> okay. Good to see you. Good to talk to you. you know, like, yeah. <laughs> Bless you have to do heart. this all day. Thank you so, so, thanks, so, sir. so much. Really, a pleasure. Really. Great to see you again. Really. Thanks. Uh, I hope yeah. people like this Christmas present that we're giving them this Well, year. that's it. Now, yeah. Is this a Christmas movie? Oh, sure. It, Merry Old England and all. Right. Yeah. 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 On Tiny Christmas Tim. Day, beautiful, beautiful package of yeah. Holmes and Watson underneath the movie going Christmas tree. Don't use that. <laughs> God. We're really blowing it. Yeah, you have the glasses. Got, uh, yeah, I got the glasses. Okay. The interview is going to be five glasses. minutes long. It's going to be mostly the glasses. <laughs> Things gotta be demoed. You literally just kind of have to pop these things a few times from the bottom, okay. and you'll kind of start to see it. This thing starts coming ah. loose. Get underneath this thing. Yeah. Use your legs, Ooh. not your back. Low it's all base. you. There you go. Low base. There you go. Yeah. Chip and Joanna Gaines love a fixer-upper. But the nearly century-old and largely abandoned Grand Karam Shrine Building in Waco gives the term new meaning. Tell me about, Joanna, what you saw in this place, because this is a big leap. Yeah, and I would start with what Chip saw in this place. <laughs> Chip loved this building for years, and I'm like, uh, I don't know, it's yeah. like a big building. I'm like, let's just stick with houses. <laughs> I really was like, it scares me. It just feels kind of haunted a little bit. Turns out that the more haunted the property is, the, the better deal you that get is, And he was like, Joe, Quite the advantage. it's a Smart. great deal. Finally, I walked in one day. He takes me up to this ballroom, and I could see it. I could see the history. Um, and so after that day, it's like, okay, I'm all in. I would argue Joe and I kind of shy away from, I don't want to say the easy stuff, because surely we're not stupid, right? <laughs> A little bit of a climber, so uh, uh, oh, go with me. There we go. There, now we're now we got something. So you drop out these uh, drop ceilings. Uh -huh. You see the ceiling as opposed to the oh, drop ceiling. Oh yeah. You're gonna go all There's the way really up. Really cool wood. Wow. So literally by yourself about four feet. Chip grew up in Colleyville, Texas, and learned from his father the value of hard work and getting a little dirty. His first business enterprise was selling juice boxes to kids at summer camp. Joanna was born in Kansas and raised there with her two sisters. The family moved every few years for her father's job with Firestone Tires, eventually landing in Waco. Both Chip and Joanna attended Baylor University in Waco, but they never met during college. Then one day, Chip walked into the tire shop owned by Joanna's dad to get his brakes fixed. 
they had a family photo like some family businesses sure. do behind the uh, cash register. register. Right. And there were these beautiful three Stevens daughters. And I would just look at this family photo and be like, <laughs> man, if I could find any three of these young <laughs> ladies, I would just be like the happiest person on the planet. Now, what did you think, Joanna, when he says, I saw your picture on the wall and I just had I to have just you. Call him, he's just a creeper. <laughs> the first thing he said to me, because I did these local commercials for my dad. At Jerry Stevens Firestone, we promise to care. At one point I had the line of like, we'll even change your lug nest for you. <laughs> And all the radio stations. That's when you want his would heart. play it and be like, I think she just said lug nuts. So funny, right when you said that, I got the chills. One day I was walking out and he's walking in and we just bump into each other. And he was like, hey, you're that girl in the commercials. Like a, I thought and I right off the bat, it. I'm like, oh, Lord. I mean, you talk about weirdo. a real kid. Chip and Joanna were married in 2003. The same year, Joanna opened her first design shop while the couple renovated houses in Waco. Almost a decade later, Joanna's small design blog caught the attention of a television producer who called asking if she could send a film crew to see if her hunch was right that the couple would make good TV. And so I called Chip, and this is a true story. He said, do not call that person back. It's a scam. scam. How much did they say you have to pay for them to film you? Sad. And I was like, I don't think they. <laughs> this is sad. <laughs> it's a scam. You talk about like my instincts because I'm like a live or die by my yeah. instincts thing. So this building, I've got these gut instincts. You watch, it'll play out this way. I mean, for the biggest opportunity <laughs> of our life, it was like a dumb and dumber <laughs> moment. It's like I think we're gonna go that way. Oh, I mean, I was adamant, and Joe was like, I think she's telling the truth. I was like, babe, she didn't say anything about sending her five thousand dollars in advance. Because I went, to, I, honestly, in all honesty, in high school, I was reached out by like this, this uh, face shot, what, do you, what would you call it? Oh, like, like a, a headshot? Yeah, yeah head like shot a modeling thing. agency. And so I went to the mall. The mall. Oh I didn't gosh. know. I go, they take pictures of you in your underwear. Babe. And then at the end of this, this production, yeah. which you think like you're so hot that you're going to get this like <laughs> opportunity of a lifetime. I yeah. was hot. And so when you get to the end of it, then yeah. they're like, well, $500 today and then equal payments of $500 for you know three months. And I was positive that these two things were somehow synonymous. Joanna convinced Chip the offer was real and the production crew came to Waco. But the TV rookies were convinced Sorry they had blown that. their tryout. If there's anything to do with the real estate market, I'm oh, sorry. We do it all. She designs them. <laughs> it's a crazy thing, I have to imagine, for them to put a camera in front of you and say, okay, be TV stars. Dude. Be funny, be charming. He was the and worst. And do it on command. He was the worst. I had an actual phobia of cameras. And this dude rolled up with these big cameras like this and this red light pops he on shuts off. And I mean, it was like a Volkswagen on this guy's shoulder. And he was like, hey, tell me your name. And I was like, I mean, it was just like he, I thought he was joking. I was scared it's to chip. death. Right. It got better from there. And executives at HGTV saw something they liked. That pilot episode launched five seasons of a phenomenon that ranked among the highest rated shows on cable television. This is awesome! Are you able to put your finger, Joanna, on why it took off the way it did? No. I, I can't. I, really, I mean, you're gorgeous, no, so that might be that's something. That's not something. If I were at home watching television, I'd watch a show with you. Well, because you were that creeper who loved the three <laughs> sisters. <laughs> There's just hope in the show. There's the hope of seeing what it becomes and not just the house. I think it's just, Here. you know, how maybe we problem solve together. Kitchen. What about you, Chip? Have you thought about it at all? I mean, I would argue if it's not her being hot, then it must be me. Uh, Weirdo. You what? being hot? Or just you in general? Just me in general, yeah. Back in <laughs> high school, back when I did that headshot thing, Wait. absolutely. Oh, back to the me, mall. Me. Yeah. So but weird. now I'm pretty self-aware. I've seen myself in, in the in the in the full-length mirror, and I'm like, no way is anybody <laughs> tuning into this because <laughs> I'm. Hot.
Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right now. Yeah. Cheers to you. Cheers. 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 We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning. TV expression. Rise and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And that wasn't an easy decision. I mean, I'm we, sure. We, we wrestled with some counselors, for lack of a better term, that sort of helped us articulate, do we want to do this or not? And I would say the overwhelming majority of those people said, when you turn that television show off, all of this other stuff will, will come crumbling down. And for that, ironic and complete opposite reality to have occurred is pretty uh, powerful uh, testimony to just be yourself, man. The Gaines empire has only grown. In 2018, HGTV's parent company, Discovery, handed Chip and Joanna their own television network centered around community, home, and design. It is named, naturally, the Magnolia Network. This was like, oh, that's going to be hard work. Mm. People were saying, don't do it. But of course, you tell us that, and we're like, well, interesting. Let's look into this I was one. say, here we are again. Yeah. Last fall, crowds flocked to Waco from all over the world for Chip and Joanna's fifth annual Silobration, a kind of pilgrimage for Fixer Upper fans. We cannot believe fifth annual. That must be a crazy thing to know that people from across the country and around the world are flying into Dallas, catching a connection to Waco, to come and is, buy things at yeah. Magnolia, or maybe catch a glimpse of yeah. you two. It's a crazy honor. I've never been a humble guy. You know, that's not a thing that you'd naturally assume about me. But in this experience, it is so humbling. A year ago, Chip and Joanna found themselves on the red carpet in New York as honorees on the prestigious Time 100 list of the year's most influential people in the world. So you find yourselves a builder and a designer from Waco, Texas, no. on a list with heads of state Stop. and Taylor Swift. <laughs> Stop it. We turn around. There's Taylor Swift with this amazing posse. We, our get, breath gets taken away. Sure. Like, oh my gosh, Taylor Swift. She walks into that freaking room full of all stars, looks the first row over, looks the second row over, catches eye contact. And from that far away, I'm yeah. like, Taylor Swift <laughs> is like eyeballing me. She's not eyeballing me. She's eyeballing yeah. Joe. Uh, uh -huh. Of course. And she goes like this. Our <gasps> heart no. <is> no. <laughs> like and then this. I passed out. An air heart from Taylor Swift likely gave Chip and Joanna some cred with their five children, aged 15 to 21 months, who've grown up in front of the Fixer Upper cameras. How do you keep it normal for your kids? It's nice that all the kids are homebodies. Before we go in anywhere, even if it's at the silos, it's like, hey, these people have come here, so we're gonna host them well, and if I run into them at Target and I need to take a picture, you guys just, it's almost like we've tried to make it normal for them. And once you explain the heart and the why behind it, they, they get on board. And as always, Chip already is thinking ahead to the next project. I could see Crew having a little sibling oh, geez. and oh. me being like, I love this woman. And when I'm 50, Chip's going to want more kids. Just know this is going to be like the headline forever. Oh Joe's pregnant again. For the so record. Sad. We've gotten like almost like odd about this. Every time we have a child, it becomes like a national news cycle. Every so time sadly, we have a child. Now I'm like, babe, business is down. Wait, I mean, stop. Like, we need to bump our, uh, our productivity, our profitability. Part I mean, of the business plan. <laughs> I'm like, Chip, I think we've got enough business. I think we're good. That's how Chip is with children. I mean, I think Chip just loves a full plate. Best time of the day. Hey. Oh, yes, oh.
way, you say that during the Smuckers things I, every morning now. I'm starting to feel like it's disingenuous. <laughs> no, no, I don't say that's the best part of it. It's my favorite time of the day. Oh, okay. <laughs> different, <laughs> best fair. part and favorite. Two different things. <laughs> totally fair, Uncle Al. Thank you. First up on Pop Star, a mediocre Pop Star today, we've got Chip <laughs> and Joanna Gaines as promoted this morning. The exclusive first look at their rebooted series. People are excited about Fixer Upper Welcome Home, which sees them turn, turn outdated houses into beautiful homes, all while juggling an even bigger family. In this clip, we're going to see Chip and Joanna working on their latest project, and they leave it up to their youngest son, Crew, son, to settle a disagreement. We brought the boss baby with us today. Do you like it? What? <laughs> you like it? I like it. I have a tiny little change order in the entryway. We were going to do the tongue and groove. You're not changing the tongue and groove, baby. We've already got it going. Listen to me. Do you want Mama to do a change order? I did. Mama, I did a thing. He said, Mom, let her do her thing. Oh, right? Yeah. Okay, Mom, sounds good. High five. Yeah. Okay. I was hoping for him to say no change orders. But Crew said, Mommy can do whatever the heck she wants. See, Crew knows the secret to life. Yeah. Always side with Mama. Absolutely. <laughs> Always. Fix Your Upper Welcome Home premieres Friday on Discovery Plus as part of the Magnolia Network. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers. The meaning, plenty the expression, rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Talent and perseverance, inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Erin French. Mm -hmm. That's right. She's the chef behind one of the most sought-after restaurants in the country. It's called The Lost Kitchen. It's a nine-course wow. dinner experience in rural Maine that only takes reservations, believe it or not, by postcard. So get this. It gets 40,000 requests for dinners, and it can only serve about 40 people each night. But Aaron's new autobiography tells a much more accessible, universal story. Harry Smith joins us with more. Hey, Harry, good morning. Good morning, guys. It is a terrific book. Let me start with that. I read it just in like a couple of nights. Couldn't put it down. Quite an amazing book. And when you see this place, when you see The Lost Kitchen, when you meet Aaron French, you think to yourself, this is the very definition of success. The Lost Kitchen in Freedom, Maine, has the aura of perfection, the setting, the preparation and presentation of the food, and the proprietress, Erin French, all perfect. Thank you, cheers, enjoy. <laughs> There's no greater joy than creating this dish and putting all this time and thought and effort in, thinking every little thing out, putting it down and sharing this. It's so intimate. But who would guess that the person who's providing the experience has been to hell and back. Someone described it, oh, if a Disney princess opened a restaurant. And I was like, oh, if you only knew. Aaron French's memoir, Finding Freedom, is a page-turning, tear-provoking recollection of a life that was anything but perfect. 
I had plenty of big dreams. I you know, always thought that I needed to get out of freedom to, to make a better life, and I wanted to be a doctor. So it was off to college in Boston. But two years later... What was it like to come home and tell your parents that you were pregnant? My father was completely enraged. I mean, through the entire process was just extremely stressful. No more college, no medical degree, no husband or partner. I considered myself a gigantic failure. And yet... Even though I didn't think highly of myself, I still had a lot of hope. And that's what I held on to, like I was going to fix this. Erin's hope turned into a dream, inspired in no small part by her father, with whom she had a difficult relationship. But there were those beautiful moments when, and every beautiful moment and loving moment and memory that I have of him always involves food. Her father owned and operated a diner where Erin worked from the time she was 14, where she learned even the simplest dish prepared well could change a customer's day. There is a bit of romance to it, even if it's, if it's a diner. There's something that's captivating. You're feeding people, you're caring for people. Erin, the single mom, found love, or so she thought. She married and opened the first Lost Kitchen in nearby Belfast, Maine. In her book, she describes a packed dining room every night, 16-hour days, a crumbling marriage, and an unbridled dependence on prescription drugs. Erin's life collapsed, her business closed, she began to believe her life was not worth living. In my mind, it was like, I'm done, it's over. There's nothing to live for. Rehab, divorce, Aaron lost custody of her son. Perfect, she was not. It almost feels to me as you're writing this book that you had to reach some absolute bottom and in its own way gave you a clean slate to literally start all over again. Yeah, and I realized that. It was like this beautiful thing that it took me a bit to, to figure out. I mean, even, even down to losing every single possession I ever had. Growing up in rural Maine, she says, helped make her a survivor. Aaron began serving meals out of an old Airstream, went to therapy, and found a way to forgive herself. I felt as though I were extending a hand toward the little girl I had left behind. I looked into her eyes and told her what no one else had, that she was perfect. Mm. For the little girl who grew up wanting to be so perfect, yeah. did you finally have to say, maybe not? Yeah. And that's okay. When you can do that, when you can forgive yourself, what does it give you? Strength. So much strength. That's what I felt. To say that you're okay. You're perfectly imperfect. In the ruin that was an old mill in her hometown of freedom, Erin opened a new lost kitchen. She's built a community of women, a sisterhood of staff, and together they met the challenge of COVID with outdoor dining and started an online store as chronicled in the show, The Lost Kitchen, on Discovery Plus. There's another proof of struggle creates beauty. And you need friction to give you strength. Erin made us a ridiculously delicious spinach salad for lunch. I'm getting the dressing now? Yeah. A little sour, a little, a little, little sweetness yeah. to it. Yeah, oh you get my a little God. bit of that vinegar there. <laughs> and we met her mom and new husband, Michael who gives this story the extra bonus of happily ever after. Erin French is a life force, a magnet, and she hopes, a mirror for others. I remember that feeling of just complete loneliness and complete despair of this was the end. And I wanted to give someone else, if, even if it was just one person who may have felt that feeling, a feeling so down and low that you were gonna end your life that there's hope and there's possibility. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? 
Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Here's one of my favorite dishes in the whole world is uh, escargot bourguignon. When I was a little kid and my dad took me to France for the first time, I would eat it at every meal. So I love that flavor of, of herbs and shallots and garlic and burnt butter and a little bit of lemon and the breadcrumbs and the snails. So... Oh, it smells good. You have water boiling? Yes, sir. Let's start making our sauce. How long did you go to school for, like, for as far as culinary arts? About three days. I, I, <laughs> left, I left really I fast. I, I was... I had already been cooking summers and with my dad and had... I was... I was already pretty into it, so... I just ran away to Europe and started cooking by myself. I don't recommend that for everyone. As far as like you're talking about growing up, one of the things that I've always thought was like very admirable about you is like how open you are about your life. Did food help you through all that? When I was 21, 22 years old and a really messed up kid, I would be cooking in restaurants and all I was focused on was doing the task at hand. And it really helped me. I have found the most valuable Thing that I own is my own experience. Sharing what really happened in my life with other people is how I do life, if that makes sense. How hard was it like creating this idol figure for yourself? Oh, I never, I, I never thought of it that way. And it, it happened to me fairly late in life. So I, I'm glad because I was able to, to handle it somewhat. All my success came late in life. Is it okay if I ask you a more pe personal question regarding the whole Anthony Bourdain situation? You can ask me anything you like. Okay. How, like, I know you guys were close. How did that affect you, like, finding out about his death? I was working in Philadelphia. I was shooting an episode of Bizarre Foods. And, uh, sorry, of Zimmern List. I, we had been out shooting late the night before. So I, I woke up at 10.30 and my phone had blown up. I just looked at the very first text and I just sat there and cried. I still carry around a, a hole inside of me for, for Tony and my friend Andy and my friend Adam and all of these people that one way or another took their own lives. It doesn't have to be that way. My family has dealt a lot with that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's sad. I, I will tell you this. Because if we're gonna talk about the problem, we should talk about a solution. The solution is talking to other human beings. We're only as sick as our secrets. You gotta have one person in life who knows all your truths. All right, are you uh, things cooking over there? I think I'm ready. Yeah, I think I'm good. You have very special snails here. They're smaller, but they're more tender and have better flavor. So now- Should I just dump them in? Yeah, go ahead. Right now I have garlic, butter, and my snails, and they're, they're sizzling and heated through. This angel hair pasta only takes like three or four minutes to cook. Something smells burnt. Ugh. I found out what was burnt. <laughs> okay. What was burning? Not the towel, that's for sure. <laughs> was there ever a time where you like wanted to stop? Like where just being out and around was too much? Wanted to stop what? 
like the oh well the show i'm sorry i should have said the show i missed my family i missed my friends i missed a lot of stuff in life i think it's why i think it's why i had a different reaction to covid than most people all right now did you make your breadcrumbs i did all right so what i do is i sprinkle them over the top of this dish and the reason i do this when I was in uh, Sicily and Sardinia and lots of places in southern Italy, they season pasta with breadcrumbs on top. It, it's really crunchy and yummy. Remember the best part about, for me, as a kid eating escargot was dunking the bread in the sauce. In the sauce. <laughs> so when you eat this pasta, you get a little bit of that vibe which I love. It's like a dried stuffing. Exactly. And I just, you know, if you have a little extra herb lying around, I just put it on top of the pasta. But this is, this is one of those dishes that whether I made a smaller portion that I would serve someone as a first course in a restaurant or at my house as part of a big meal, or this is a big bowl that's sort of like Sunday night along with a salad. Yeah, I was gonna say, I got the family meal right here. <laughs> The beauty of it is that you've recreated all of those flavors of a classic French bistro dish, and you've put it through the lens of sort of, I don't know, a more modern approach to global cuisine. What do you think? Uh, I think that's really good. It's definitely something I'd make again. It's funny that you said, I'm gonna try this again, because I always tell people, you make something once, it's good, or maybe it's a failure. You make it a second time and it's perfection. We learn that's just a life lesson. I learned that in kitchens. We learn from our mistakes. And in kitchens, you get to cook the same dish three, four times if you wanted to, right? <laughs> All the cameras could go away. You could sit there and do it, and you, you could literally master this because you're a smart kid. By the time you by the time you make it a couple times, you'll have it figured out. If you're ever looking for help, you know, I'm here. Would you ever like consider a, like a sidekick? <laughs> Life has a wonderful way of bringing people together. There are no coincidences. You're not gonna be able to get rid of me. You have a friend for life. And if there's anything that I can ever do for you, it, personal, professional, it does not matter. That's what I'm here for. Well, once again, thank you for taking the time out of your day. I can't tell you how much this, this means is the, to me. This like... is the best part of my week. So thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. I think pictures are powerful. They are tools used to communicate. And so I feel a responsibility to tell stories that reflect experiences that look like mine, experiences that aren't often seen in picture books. And so it's really important for me to create pictures that are empowering to as many different kids as possible. My name is Christian Robinson. I'm an author and illustrator of picture books. I think children are the best audience. They're curious but they're also very honest, and you kind of have to present things to them in that way. What am I drawing? A tiger! That's right, okay. It's been a while since I've drawn a tiger, so I might need some help. Try your best. That's a good point. <laughs> you know, I've illustrated many picture books by different authors, but with Matt in particular, our collaboration has been more of a collaboration where we're actually communicating. There have been times that I've worked on books and I've never met the author, never emailed them. But with Matt, we kind of developed a friendship. I met Christian back in 2014. So Christian and I collaborated on first Last Stop on Market Street, and then our second book together was Carmela Full of Wishes. His writing gave me a sense of appreciation um, for my own story. A story like Last Stop on Market Street about a boy and his grandmother riding a bus in the city. That was my experience. And I don't think I even valued or appreciated it or saw it as something worth spotlighting in a story. But Matt did that. When I got the initial art, I was just so moved by how he fleshed out the story. And I think that's what good artists do. He just wants to put a good book into the hands of young people. And that's his focus. Christian and I, we were on tour for Carmela, and we had a little time to, to waste away before our event. 
And so we sat down at a cafe and we started to talk about what do we want to do next? You know, what do we want to collaborate on next? I think I, I mentioned to Matt, like, what if we did a story about an incarcerated, a parent, a child who has an incarcerated parent and he had a spark in his eye. I took it as a challenge. How do you write about having an incarcerated parent in a picture book? He <laughs> wrote down some notes and, and then we have Milo Imagines the World. Milo's a young artist. I was a young artist. Milo has a mother who is incarcerated growing up. My mother was in prison for most of my childhood. So yeah, Milo's story is my story. Growing up, I was raised by my grandmother. She was my caregiver. She not only took care of me, she took care of my brother, my two cousins, my aunt. And we all lived in this tiny one bedroom apartment in LA. We didn't have much space or means. And looking back, I recognize that creativity drawing and making pictures was my way of having some say over my circumstances. I've had Christian since he was five months. Uh, unexpectedly, uh, his father brought him to me um, when he was an infant um, without any warning, which was a shock of seeing your mother in an institution and knowing she was in and out of his life from the time he was five months old until he was a young man. It was hard for Christian, but he didn't voice and his feelings until he grew older, you know, and was able to express. My relationship with my mother is somewhat distant. Um, growing up, she was in and out of prison for most of my childhood. She struggles with drug addiction and mental health. There was no other way it would not have affected him because she wasn't consistent. And uh, the times that she was in his life, she showed him a great deal of love. I in no way look at her as some kind of antagonist in my story. See, one of my most favorite memories of my mother growing up was when I was about maybe seven or eight. She had just gotten out of prison and she reached out to me and said, I would love to spend the, the day with you, the whole day. What do you want to do? I went with The Lion King because the movie had been out for a while and everyone was talking about it. And I just remember having that connection, making that connection for the first time of like, oh, people who draw make these movies. I like to draw. Maybe I could be someone who draws and makes stories. And I totally credit my, my mother for giving me that experience, that opportunity. There was a point in his time when he was uh, involved in uh, modeling clay. I have quite a few little clay figures that he created when he was eight. So that led me to believe, or let me know that he did have more of a bent toward art. He could have turned the fact that his mother wasn't there for him, he could have turned that in destructively as opposed to being positive and creating a life that he's satisfied with, which I'm very proud. One thing I, I really admire about Christian is he's so dedicated to the art of the project. He's not as interested in the business side of it. He doesn't worry about the bestseller lists or what awards a book is getting. There are not enough books, children's books, for children of color to connect with. Our stories matter, especially those that we don't always see. You know, we live in a country with one of the highest incarceration rates in the world. Um, so there are a lot of families that know this experience and unfortunately, not that many stories that reflect it. So I just hope to let those young people know that their story matters and that it's valuable. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. 
Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this, or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. These women are so often forgotten. They have no makeup. And a lot of them shake and, and you know, they flinch or whatever. They can't put on makeup. So my coming there, I think it means a lot. She makes us feel a lot better about ourselves. We're people. Everybody's getting older. Give me a break. <laughs> my name is Alita. I am the founder of My Makeover Mission. And my mission is reawakening the inner beauty of the often forgotten women in nursing homes. Style has been in my DNA. I've had a long career in fashion, from being an editor to a stylist to having my own company and being an image consultant. I'm off to Hollywood right now. In 1996, when I went to visit my mom in her nursing home, I got into a room and the first thing she said to me, look what they put me in, it doesn't match. And <laughs> I thought at that moment, oh my God, at her age, that she still wants to feel like she is beautiful. And I said, you know what? Before I leave tomorrow, I am going to give her a makeover. And that's what I did. And it wasn't until I looked at the pictures that another eight took of us that I had my aha moment to make these women feel so good, special, relevant and happy. I knew that this was what I wanted to do. The Bayberry home, I've been there three or four times. I called and we set up an appointment for me to go and give the ladies makeovers. Julia, Olive, and Barbara, they're just amazing. I am 100 years old. I feel flattered. I really feel very great when she makes me up. I loved Barbara the moment I met her. Coffee? Yeah. We're going to take off your glasses, right? Makeup is something we don't do. For me, it so gives us a real lift, really makes our day. Julia, she's lovely. She's like a leave it to beaver mother, you know? She's just so sweet and gentle. It makes me feel very good because I was a rockette at one time, so I had to use a lot of makeup. I think when she um, does the eyes, I think they look very uh, beautiful. I'm going to try and fill in the brow, give it some definition because this is where we get our expression. Oh my gosh, imagine not doing your eyebrows for three, four, five years. Imagine, it's a lot of wiry hair. That is my biggest challenge, and I'm big on eyebrows. When it comes to the lips, they're all in for the red. <laughs> and I love that about them, just to know that they have that oomph. <laughs> I think some of it has to do with they see me wearing it. You know, like in uh, Harry Met Sally, I'll have what she's having, same thing. I think they like the touch of the hand, you know? A lot of times the women are so relaxed that they go to sleep. <laughs> You're sleeping. 
take a rest. They are so at peace and it's a wonderful feeling to know they trust me that much. It is something I look forward to. You know, we talk about it for days after. I think she's a very beautiful person and she makes you feel good while she's doing the makeup. Makeup is a byproduct. It's really about the connection, the symbiosis of me and her already sleeping. Um, <laughs> it's okay if you do, it's okay, honey. You've waited a long time. What are waiting for? Oh, thank you. Just feeling touched and loved. And that's what they're missing, and that's why I started this. Oh my God, I look alive. Yes. Ah, I thank you so much. You're so welcome. You saw me taking before and after shots, and that's to put on my Instagram, but also to send the after picture to the families. I think it means a lot. I remember, you know, my picture that the aide took of my mom and I, and it means so much that, God forbid, when that time comes, to look at that picture, and that's what you remember. Okay, girls, are we ready? I have something for all of you. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Thank Day. You. I hope that you enjoy. <laughs> and we appreciate you being here. I know. Thank, Thank you, honey. Making the women happy, making them feel the way they do. I love that. People say to me, oh my God, you bring them so much joy. <laughs> honey, I'm the one who's getting the joy. I'm really, I'm the one that's receiving it. It's amazing. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this, or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal what are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. <laughs> in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right, I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Craft beer industry has exploded in recent years, becoming a nearly $30 billion industry. And now, emerging from the pandemic, many specialty breweries are flourishing, with black-owned establishments in particular gaining a lot of momentum. While they make up less than 1% of the more than 8,000 in the United States, more black brewers are now starting to open sites. In fact, I re recently stopped by the only one here in New York that brews on-site for some beer and the side of... South Carolina home cooking and some conversation. Mm -hmm. If somebody's putting their true passion and, and true love into it, that's a good beer. By that definition, Chris Gansey has been making good beer for a yes, decade. Sir. Gansey is the owner of Daleview Biscuits and Beer, the only black owned brewery that brews on site in all of New York State. And that happens in these tanks below a kitchen 
that's very busy serving up biscuits and fried chicken by way of somewhere very special to both of us, our mutual hometown of Columbia, South Carolina. Where'd you go to middle school? Um, Gibbs. Oh yeah, we used to play you guys in basketball. We used to beat Gibbs all the time. You sure about that? <laughs> Gansey says he didn't even drink beer until his wife gave him a small home brewing kit 10 years ago for Father's Day. Being from Columbia, South Carolina as well, I know, especially in the summertime, cookouts are big. Yes. You mean to tell me back then you weren't like drinking tall boy beers? No. <laughs> I was not drinking beer at all. But three years ago, that hobby evolved into a business. How did you get from those home brewing kits to the owner of quite the establishment. People that believed in me, I had my wife and some close friends who believed in the, in the vision and kind of pushed me forward. It's like, you, you can do this. Why not spread the joy? Now he's turning out craft beer and Carolina biscuits in the heart of Lefferts Garden, Brooklyn. Intentionally choosing a historically black neighborhood to help integrate an industry with little diversity. I wanted a place where I could be part of the community and also do a place to educate people around craft beer. Like, I feel a cold beer is something that can bring people together. Out of the roughly 8,500 breweries in America, just about 60 are black owned. My hope is we can help change mindsets in the neighborhood because the neighborhood is changing and in creating and unity and, and um, equity. So that's my goal to help create equity in this community. Gansey is striving for more than exposure and equity, but for a few teaching moments as well. Dale views beers are named after lesser known civil rights leaders like Jamaican activist Paul Bogle and freedom rider Diane Nash. These are the last three in existence. We sold out of the You sold out of yes. Diane Nash. It's a beautiful label. And I love that on the back, you actually explain for folks who might be unfamiliar. Even better than the label is what's inside them. I'm not used to learning and drinking at the same time. <laughs> this is a novel concept. Oh, it's not just beer? No, it's also biscuits. Wow. And let me tell you, a lot of folks won't recognize this, but that's pimento cheese. What, what you know about pimento cheese? That's, yeah, Columbia, South Carolina. I grew up. I have pimento cheese three times a day. My grandma would say, y'all put your foot in that. That is fantastic. Chicken thigh. Of course. Yeah. Now, see, I, oh, boy. <laughs> Al Roker's going to love this. A taste of South Carolina now educating Brooklyn beer drinkers, all thanks to a thoughtful present. Had your wife decided to give you a tie for Father's Day? I'd probably be a tie maker. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. You're not yet past your prime. You still have lots of time. Open up your mind. Leave the process, food behind. Working in a restaurant is very much a young man's game. I'm definitely an oddity, but I'm having a lot of fun defying preconceptions. And a lot of it is that I want to prove to myself that I can do it. Deciding to be a 
wine cook at age 66 really, really is a stupid idea from all practical aspects, you know, but so what? <laughs> I'm Dr. Peter Glatz. I'm a retired dentist and a full-time wine cook at Nunsuch Restaurant in Oklahoma City. Before I started my career as a chef at Nunsuch, I was a practicing dentist for 40 years. My favorite thing about being a dentist was uh, the interpersonal relationships that I developed with my patients, and I've always enjoyed working with my hands, doing fine detailed work. When I was a freshman in college, I would borrow the key to the uh, dormitory kitchenette and uh, I'd begin making bread. People would walk by and stick their head in and you know, see what was going on and it was a way to uh, meet people and yes, that's how I uh, met my late wife, Julianne. As fate would have it, I married a woman who loves cooking, who uh, was very good at it. And so uh, for most of my married life, um, I was uh, the dishwasher and uh, occasionally the uh, salad maker. I was wanting to prepare myself for uh, a career in the arts. I shared this information with my father and his comment was, how do you think you're gonna support a family as an artist and you ought to go and do something like dentistry? I felt like dentistry used a lot of the same skill sets that um, I would utilize in art and uh, it was a more lucrative and uh, stable uh, job situation. Dental school was uh, very, very hard for me. I had never uh, faced failure before, and I wasn't about to then. Welcome to Birth of Us. This is my wandering, traveling, tiny house and kitchen. I love the tiny house feeling. I have really everything I need to survive in a tiny compact space and I love being able to go to music festivals and cook for people. This has been a real labor of love. I originally bought a bus with a wheelchair lift to help me lift beer coolers into the bus but uh, it turned out to be a, a good move because then she could I could lower the lift and she could drive right up there and it allowed us uh, you know in the last years of her life to be able to go on nice trips and uh, um, you know pretty much go anywhere that was taken uh, freshman uh, year in college, uh, uh, right at the time we got engaged. Uh, that's my wife, Julianne, and uh, I uh, in, our, in her dorm room window. When I lost my wife and my children were all grown up and had their own families by this point, I was able to look at myself and say, you know, I, I don't need to do this anymore. I had so many ideas and so many wishes and goals, and I put them on hold to raise a family. I'd look back at the dreams that I walked away from and you know, struggle with resentment. But I realized uh, that it wasn't too late. There was still time. I've always enjoyed fine dining. I read about Chef Elena Regan, who had a Michelin-starred restaurant in Chicago, Elizabeth Restaurant. I loved it. I would return, oh, every three to six months and spend another two to four days with her. We became uh, good friends. I fell in love with the restaurant environment problem was it's physically demanding. You're on your feet 12, 14 hour shifts. And at that particular time in my life, I was uh, overweight and suffering from a hip that needed a replacement and back problems. Then I became involved with a, a CrossFit group uh, and a trainer who focused on older individuals. As I grew stronger and healthier, I realized that I think I can do this. In all these places, um, I just found my happy place. And uh, that's what made me feel like 
I uh, want this to be more than a hobby, I want this to be my life. I've known uh, Anne for uh, quite a while. Anne was, before becoming my wife, was a family friend. Then uh, I'll get to working on prepping some vegetables and we'll put together a rice salad. We'll use uh, either black rice or uh, red cargo rice. Okay. My husband, Peter, is an amazing man. He's creative and he's uh, very focused and he's just, um, he's, he's a wonderful partner. Our original plan was to travel in the bus and uh, support ourselves by doing pop-up cooking events. When I saw on Instagram that a restaurant that I was so impressed by, none such, was hiring a, a line cook, I sent in my resume. Uh, it was seven pages of dental stuff and a half a page of cooking experience. And much to my shock, they offered me the job. I knew that it was an important career move for him and that it would help make him a better chef. And I completely supported that. And I wanted him to be able to do that because I know that in our ventures later, that it'll all it will do will make things better. It's a really a uh, wonderful thing to have uh, that kind of support. I think she's enjoying the um, crazy little ride that we're on. I think Peter's story is very brave, you know, that's like something I think a lot of people his age think about and no one tries, so it's pretty cool. He definitely brought something to this restaurant, to our kitchen that we were lacking and that we didn't know that we needed. It's just a bunch of mostly young kids in here, you know, myself included, and so it's very refreshing and humbling to have him here and kind of just like remind us, you know, what life is really about. What I want people to take away from my story is that one doesn't have to resign himself to living a life that you aren't fulfilled living. I want to thank you all so much for uh, being here. As you know, um, cooking is my passion, so I'm so glad to uh, share this with you. What the mind can conceive and believe, it can chin achieve. Chin-chin. Chin-chin. Oh, chin. If you create a vision of what you want your life to be, and then do the work to help you get there, it can be achieved. Hey, look, it's our Today All Day All friends. Right. Yes, we know it's our favorite day of the week, yours too, Friday. And we've got a great Friday show for you. We really do. Now, if you didn't know it, you've stumbled upon something wonderful. It's our digital show. Today in 30, we have a lot to get to as we head into the weekend. What's, head, what's up first? All right. Olympic ceremonies. That's right. Just one week away, the final stretch for the athletes. We are going to start with a report from Tokyo. And then 